America's game. Now, 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 stop coming and say everything to change. The change. That warp tool make you open your brain. Open your brain. Eric Vanek is here, so remember the name. Remember the name. Hey, hey. He got the waiver wire for the week. Tell you who to start and who to give a seat. Dropping the podcast every week. You know the knowledge is elite. After the show, we gon' hold a Lombardi. I'm celebrating like we throwing a party. This the blueprint that I know they gon' copy. Cause this is America's game What is up, everybody? Well, welcome back to America's Game, episode number 27. I'm your host, Eric Vanek, and you can find me on Twitter at Eric Vanek NFL. And as always, joined by my co-host, Mike. Mike, what's going on, man? Oh, we're doing better now, man. Had some bad Taco Bell for lunch. <laughs> the drive home. Let's just say, Eric, that was touch and go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All nice yeah. and punched up. Yeah, yeah. You remember next Friday? Yeah. Craig's oh, yes. dad? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I I use that GIF all the time. I I made it specifically. <laughs> Whenever I do that, and send it to whoever. If I'm playing some game with somebody, I I feel about five pounds later. <laughs> <laughs> Had the air freshener out. It was oh, bad. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, but we're better now. <laughs> five pounds later. <laughs> Taco Bell, man, bad choice. <sighs> Yep, I can uh, attest to that. That uh, I've been there a time or two. I'm sure most of the listeners have been there a time or two as well. So I get it. It just but, tastes uh, so good going down, man. Tastes oh, yeah. so good going down. Absolutely. Trash food. <laughs> Damn, I love it. Cheap trash food. <laughs> Can't beat it. Um, but yeah, man. Um, got a we got a Super Bowl now. Chiefs we and Forty Niners. Yeah. The Taylor Swift versus the Forty Niners. Taylor Swift versus the Jock Turdies. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think of the of the two games, Baltimore and Kansas City, and the Lions and the Forty ers Baltimore, and like, I walked away from that game going, "Man, Todd Munkin, what were you doing, man? One of the best rushing teams in the league, and Gus Edwards barely gets touches, right? And he, when he got touches, he looked great, like he was gashing them. Yeah. And uh, the whole thing with Lamar not running the football too, it was like." What are you guys doing, man? You do know this is the AFC Championship game. This ain't like, ah, uh, you know, we lose this we'll game. We'll get them next week. Yeah, there ain't no next. It was, it was bad, man, and especially with the way their defense was playing. I know Mahomes did enough uh, to get the win, and it's hard to keep him down. But, geez, man, that defense was, was flying around making plays. There was a couple questionable calls where you're like, Really, that was taunting. I just watched Travis Kelsey do the same thing. He didn't throw a flag on that shit. But the uh, the Isaiah likely to the uh, non PI. It was a bad decision to throw into triple coverage, anyways, by Lamar. But I was like, clearly they tackled the dude before he even right. <laughs> got a chance to make a okay, whatever. But right. rough game. But Chiefs are back in it. Uh, at least when that one was over, that whole conspiracy theory about the the logos. From, I don't know if you saw that going yeah, around because yeah, of the yeah. colors. I was like, okay, we can get rid of that shit. Yeah. And then there was the whole Ravens 49ers, like people finding it on like Super Bowl cookies and like Walmart or whatever the hell it was. I was like, okay, you guys put down the fucking forks, knives. All right, it's <laughs> let's calm down here. Put the pitchforks hope- away. It's not scripted. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jesus. I hope they. Um- change the super bowl logo now to like a light red or like a regular red and like a little bit darker red now there you go just to fuck with everybody that'd let's be go. great let's do it <laughs> if uh godell had a little bit of a sense of a humor i would totally do that and then the the second game man what an epic epic collapse by the uh the lions, the lions man they yeah. fucked that one away at least my bet hit though if you remember i said it on this show i put the money down too Mm-hmm. Lions in the seven points, right. and it was looking like uh, for a while there. I was like, I should have put fucking money line. <laughs> should have gone right. money line in the over. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, I didn't go money line <laughs> in the over. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that, that first game, you know, they've Chiefs answered right off the bell. There, just went down, scored that touchdown right away, and then you know the Ravens came back and scored, you know, pretty quickly too. That nice little pass from Lamar to. Uh, Say flowers. I'm yep. like, shit, we're going to have ourselves a game. And we didn't get, like, barely any points the rest of the game from on then. Um, I'll tell you what, man, the, that Chiefs defense is, is really, really good. Legit. Um, 
Spag- Spagnola, he doesn't get enough credit uh, for what he's done for years now. Uh, yeah, I know he got one opportunity to head coach and it kind of flopped out or whatever, but you don't ever hear, oh, let's let's interview him for our head coaching job. Let's interview him. Right. I mean, like, you never hear his name. I'm kind of shocked by that. Hopefully Washington and Seattle, now that they're the only two teams without a head coach, maybe they sit and wait and they interview Spagnola after the Super Bowl here. Just might as well wait two weeks. You're only fighting with one other team to get a coach. Yeah. Um, I would kind of think maybe McDonald's from Baltimore might get one of the jobs too. Yeah. Um, but if I'm, you know, on the other team, I'm like, I might as well just wait it out because I would be the only team that doesn't have a head coach yet. I can wait out. I can interview whoever the hell I want. Um, and I think interviewing Spagnola might be a very smart idea. Yeah. He also has a great position there too, though. If you enjoy winning, oh, it's yeah. like, listen, I don't get none of the blame when we suck. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's I mean, not Steve, my fault. Um, Steve Wilkes, too. He's done another tremendous job there. He should get another opportunity. He did a well. great job in the second half. First half, he was getting gaped. Yeah, he was, for he sure. He was getting gaped left and right. Uh, part of that's Chase Young and his maximum effort. Love seeing that one. Ooh, he really tried hard on that Jameer Gibbs touchdown. <laughs> All right. That was like um, some Deontay Johnson level stuff right there, or some uh, George Pickens blocking George on the edge Pickens. there. Right. right. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Uh, yeah, that Lions, and then like you said, the Lions game, they just, man, 24-7 at half, Lions were just absolutely just beating the shit out of them, but, I mean, I, I knew, like, the 49ers weren't going to just get blown out, like, I knew it was gonna, they were going to at least make it a one-score game at some point, but shit, they came right back and uh, won the whole fucking thing, so, congrats to uh, both teams, going to be a pretty good Super Bowl, I think the line right now, wherever you look, is like two or two and a half, 49ers are the favorite, um, I'm putting my money on the Chiefs. I, I don't see the Chiefs losing. Especially the 49ers have squeaked by fucking two weeks in a row. I will bring it up again and people will bash me. But I preface this by saying I was very impressed with Brock Purdy and his ability to scramble. Yeah. I mean, he he did what he had to do, right? Like, you get yeah. it a third down and you're like, all right, Lions, you get a stop here. Like, you're you're back in this. Like, you can take control. Purdy scrambles for 10, 11, whatever it was. Right then again, and again, and I'm going, Jesus, man, this guy is is he's got the moxie to take off and scramble, and he did make a handful of throws where I was like, okay, that was a dot, that was a nice ball, nice dime. He made that one really crazy one to uh, mm-hmm. Jawan Jennings. Bro, I'm like, okay, but again, people always get on me because they're like, Mike, you just hate Purdy. I'm like, L- li- how many fucking interceptions are we going to see this guy have dropped in the playoffs? <laughs> like, he is the GOAT at getting interceptions dropped. It is ridiculous. Right. And then he hits that Vildor in stride <laughs> 52 yards down the field in the fucking face mask. <laughs> it bounces off, and I, you, and then people are like, well, it was going to be DPI. All right, well, when I watched it, it would look like OPI to me, right? Right. DB clearly going for the ball. <laughs> He's running the damn route like he was the receiver. So, um, and th- I think right after that, he almost threw a pick in the end zone, and then he came back and hit Ayuk, which w- was a nice pass, nice ball. Yeah. So, um, at least when I look at it, I know I get it because I'm like the Purdy hater or whatever. But go look at PFF grades; like he's the second worst passer in the playoffs. You know, only behind Tua's god awful game he had at Kansas City. Adjusted completion percentage; he's horrible. Uh, the only stat he's really good in is like the ones that I don't really care about yards per attempt, like that kind of shit where it's yeah. like, okay, you hit Christian McCaffrey and you took it 40, 50 yards. I don't give a fuck what your yards per attempt were. So right. I'm kind of with you when I evaluate just the way the, the Niners defense had been playing, uh, getting gaped multiple weeks by Aaron Jones and the Packers. And then this week it was Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta and Amon Ra just doing their thing for the first half. And, what really in the second half, some some kind of fluke plays, some boneheaded coaching decisions, some questionable things, uh, Jameer Gibbs fumble, like inside their own 20, and I'm going, oh, my God, like, yes, Purdy, you did enough. You made some great scrambles. Um, I really like to see that. But if he doesn't, like, turn it on to regular season Brock Purdy, like he doesn't mm-hmm. ramp that up, they're going to get fucking blasted in the, in the Super Bowl. Because right. like you said, Eric, that Chiefs defense ain't fucking around, right? Chris Jones will eat his lunch. Uh, they get a good pressure off the edge. The Jerry Sneed is a fucking shutdown corner. Uh, Brandon Ayuk's been nice, but I don't know if Ayuk's got anything for, for Sneed, to be completely honest. And Then all you really need to do is just stop the run. 
with Christian McCaffrey and slow down the plays to Debo and make Purdy, you know, try to hit Ayuk or try to hit Jawan Jennings or George Kittle. And if he's been playing like he has been, man, they're gonna they're gonna pick a few of those off. I don't think they're gonna drop this shit. But maybe maybe Purdy's got that horseshoe so far up his ass that he <laughs> he'll look out. And we know on the offensive side of the ball, Patrick Mahomes will you know do Patrick Mahomes things. Right, I think I think Mahomes is the one who's had a, the horseshoe up his ass. Like it's like true. Well, he's got it, it. Feels like the refs, man. Like it really does. I hate to be that person, but like right. some of the Chiefs calls too. You're like, what right. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right, I get it. Um, I just think with the way the Chiefs have been playing recently, uh, definitely didn't see this coming into the playoffs. Like they were written off by everybody yeah. else. It was Baltimore. It was, oh, maybe the Browns have a chance or whoever's got a chance here in the AFC Buffalo. And, uh, you know, they just run through everybody. They took out, um, who'd they play week the first week? Dolphins. Dolphins. That's right. They took out the Dolphins yep. that were the, you know, one of the highest flying offenses in the league. Granted, it was minus 75 out. So. <laughs> Welcome to the Midwest. <laughs> that, right. Exactly. Then they played Buffalo, um, the team that they've pretty much owned in the playoffs. Uh, went down to the wire with them, took them out. On Northern, the road. On the road. On the road. And then they go on the road again to the AFC Championship game to Baltimore um, and hold them to seven points. Nuts. So. Uh, what Kansas City has done is remarkable. Jeez, uh, I mean, they're a dynasty. They're going to win this one again, I think, too, and, and become a dynasty. So um, hats off to them. I just think give, like being an Eagles fan for all those years, me and you, we always heard the stat, Andy Reid's like 10-0 and 0 when he comes off of a bye or whatever. Well, he's got two weeks to compare or uh, prepare here for the 49ers. Um Spagnola's going to get his shit together. They've always done really well together. Their offense is going to be humming. They're, I think the Chiefs just get it done. I think uh, it's pretty, I think it'll be a good game. I don't think it's going to be like a, a dog shit game or anything, but I think uh, the Chiefs are going to have enough to hold on here. And you, you think about the Lions game too, how successful they were running plays over the middle, crossers, in-breaking routes against that Niners defense. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey might be set up for, you know, he was on fire against the Ravens in that first yeah. half. He might might even supersede that in the Super right. Bowl. And then Rasheed Rice does a lot of that stuff too, drag routes, great yards after the catch guy. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of in-breaking routes over the middle, intermediate stuff. They're not really looking to take too many shots down the field just because right. they don't fucking have anybody worth a shit. Um, right. But uh hopefully the Niners uh make it competitive figure it out on the defensive side of the ball and then like I said I'll, I'll be interested to see like I'm, I'm not gonna put it past Brock Purdy to actually go back into the bag mm -hmm. and like you know make some fucking plays he can do it he right. can he just hasn't shown it in the playoffs and anybody who tries to tell me otherwise I think is fucking foolish like turn yeah. the fucking game on and watch man <laughs> like right. what what are we doing some of the shit he's doing one of the things I was looking to do with betting too. So, right now, if you take Chiefs money line, it's like plus one hundred. So you put a hundred bucks in, you win two hundred bucks. Um, with the points, the two and a half points or two points, whatever your site you're on, it's like minus one eighteen. So you win like eighty six bucks. So you win one hundred eighty six or whatever. What would you do? Would you just take the points and oh well, I lose fourteen dollars if I would have bet money line? At least take... for me, I'm not a I'm not a professional better. Um, yeah, like I don't either. do this either, but if I'm looking at it and I go, what who gives a fuck? Two and a half points. I don't really give a fuck. Just give me the money line. Just at that point, okay. just give me the outright, right? I'll just take the outright. Cause I was thinking the same thing as you. I was like, I'm just going to take the, take them out. Right. And I'll win it. But it's like for losing 14 extra dollars, I might as well just fucking take the two and a half just in case it's like a 1.49ers win or some shit. You know? Fair, fair. How many Super Bowls have we had? Like with that margin though less than a field goal yeah I, I don't even know on that either can't be too many right like some yeah. of the most exciting ones you know they they're within a touchdown or maybe like four a points goal, where they yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's basically like a coin flip um man, i don't see it being too many one point games i think nowadays though with the way the uh, extra points are like you could easily miss one now so i could definitely see it like coming down to a one field goal game at some point um or a one point game at that point so kind of <laughs> curious whatever i'm just thinking out loud of what i would do i think i would probably just say fuck it it's 14 extra dollars i'll just take the two and a half 
I get you. Um, I get you. And I'll I'm probably also just take the money on. Yeah, and I'm also taking the over on how many fucking times they show Taylor Swift. My man, I'm taking the over too. We're hammering the fuck out of that over. I saw a great TikTok today too, where it's like they're faking a, they're showing some Chiefs highlights or whatever and faking like they were announcers of the Super Bowl, right? And Travis Kelsey just makes an incredible one handed catch, you know, behind his back. No look, like they're really hyping it up like they're Gus Johnson. And then the, uh, the color commentary guy comes in, he goes, and now to video of Taylor Swift taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god i can see that like hey we got to get her out of here any way possible oh, <laughs> you yeah. gotta take a oh dump. my god Let's... guys guys we got to get the camera on her she went to go get popcorn in the suite uh we got a video or going to get popcorn or something you know like it's just so like whatever uh but i'm definitely taking the over like i don't even i haven't seen any lines on it or anything like that yet that probably won't be till next week that that kind of stuff will come out but whatever the over is i'm just fucking hammering it because they cannot like they can't just stop themselves they just have to do it like i'm surprised like <clears throat> if this was on espn you know how they did the national championships and they have like every fucking espn channel has a different channel i'm surprised mm. they wouldn't have like a taylor swift fucking channel if it was like on espn like right. espn classics today is taylor swift cam for the super bowl like just a camera on her at all times i, I gotta just... find some place too to let me parlay some of these props because i would put i would put money on travis kelsey prop winning mvp obviously the chiefs on the money line the taylor swift show over and then the fourth leg would be Travis Kelsey proposes after the game on the field. Yeah, and then the fifth leg would be fucking retires too. <laughs> Rides <laughs> off into the sunset, Super Bowl MVP, and just married what the richest woman in the entire world Probably. at this point, yeah. most popular by far, I guess. I, that's actually a serious question for me because we've talked about it in our Discord quite a bit the last couple of days. Some people are doing some startups, and Travis Kelsey is falling like he's like the fifth or sixth tight end off the board in some of these leagues yeah. right now. Seventh, eighth round pick in startups. Right. Do you think – what would you put your percentage on that if they win, he retires? 60-40, he retires. That's kind of where I'm at too. Yep. Maybe 65% because we've gotten closer. I said this shit way back before the season even started. And people are like, you're crazy. He said on, you know, with Jason, he loves playing. He wants to come back. And, mm -hmm. you know, he has no plans of retiring. And I'm just like, listen, before the Taylor Swift shit, I was like, if this motherfucker just wins Super Bowl, just right off into the sunset. You know, it's, it's feeling like he's getting to that point. Yeah. What a great way to go out. I thought maybe last year he would have done it after beating his brother in the Super Bowl. But right. Didn't happen. Uh, so this year just was like, okay, we're closer. All right, I'll put some money down or, you know, maybe fade him a little bit in my dynasty leagues and not get too excited. And here we are now. He's dating the, the most famous woman in the entire world. <laughs> yeah. Like he could just walk into pretty much one. His podcast is hugely successful, right? If they were to get affiliate yeah. deals or anything like that, he's going to make a fuck ton of money off of that with his brother. Um, Somebody wants to get him on like a pregame show, oh, yeah. color commentator, whatever the fuck he wants to do. He's going to make a shit ton of money there. I think I'd just enjoy fucking retirement if I won the Super Bowl and He's, go. Yeah, if he wins the Super Bowl, that'll be his third Super Bowl victory. He's going to arguably go on down as one of the greatest tight ends ever. I wouldn't even say arguably. I think he is at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Gronk's there, Tony Gonzalez is there, and him. That's probably the top three. Yeah. Um, so he's in that he's if not one he's in the conversation and he's a first ballot hall of famer no doubt in my mind he's first ballot hall of famer um he has nothing left to fucking prove so i i'm, I'm with you i think it's like 60 40 65 35 the guy retires so i think in leagues right now i think i'm behind if i have him i'm looking to trade him if i can let some, somebody else wants him get something for him before he retires um, in these startup drafts, I get it. Like in seventh, eighth, ninth round, take a shot at him because right. if he does come back for one more year, he's going to be super valuable still. So you get it. But if I'm doing that in a startup right now, I'm making sure I back him up with another solid tight end. Like, can I get Evan Ingram or David Njoku or, you know, Dallas Goddard, somebody like that, yeah. just in case Kelsey does retire. Because I, like, in most leagues, you draft Travis Kelsey and you're like, well, fuck it. I don't need another tight end for a while. Um, I can grab, you know, Gerald Everett or Tyler Higby, whoever, at the fucking end and be fine for a backup. 
Um, I think in leagues like if you're drafting right now, you're going to have to make sure you get somebody else um, behind Kelsey just in case he does retire because I think it's a very good possibility he could. Well, I live that a warp tight end life anyways. So mm. when I've drafted Travis Kelsey in the, the – I think I've got him in the eighth round now twice in startup drafts. When I draft him, one is a team that I'm not competing with anyways. Like I took okay. a bunch of young receivers, rookie picks at the top, um, and I just said, fuck it on quarterback. Like I don't really care. I just took Travis Kelsey because I looked at it and I go, like the 203 or Travis Kelsey? Fuck, I'll just take Travis Kelsey. And if he comes back and plays, shit, I might get a first rounder in 25 that's just random, easily. Right. So I made money on that one. That's kind of where I'm at with him on teams where I'm like drafting for more competitive. Um, I'm okay anyways because I was probably going to say fuck it to tight end regardless. And right. like the the Tyler Higby, yeah, Tyler Higby's not a good example for me because he fucking tore his ACL so so late. Um, right. But like the the Gerald Everett types, like those turd burgers, yeah, where I'm Juwan like just Johnson. have a role somewhere, you yeah. know, and I'll figure tight end out as the season goes on, and like as I pick up Tanner Hudson's of the world and just slot them into a starting lineup or whatever. That's kind of where I was going to be at anyways. So Travis Kelsey is just kind of like a luxury pick where I'm just going, fuck it, house money. If he does something great, all of a sudden I got probably a top three, four tight end in the league, mm -hmm. at least for one year. If he fucking retires, I'll put him at the end of my bench. <laughs> Pray right. he comes out of retirement like Gronk next year, right? But you just, you just kind of burnt money. But in the seventh, eighth, ninth round, I'm kind of okay just – tossing one away because a lot of those guys you yeah. draft there anyways like have the same kind of risk not that they're going to retire but the fact that they're just shit <laughs> don't actually mean anything exactly. to your team anyway so right yeah it's not like you're drafting in, in round two or three like you have in the last couple of years so if you need that insurance so eric like i'm i'm full on like evan ingram's like a 10th or 11th maybe a 12th round startup pick fucking take him you know, after you take Kelsey right. and you're just like, okay, if Kelsey comes back, I try to trade Evan Ingram. If he doesn't come back, Evan Ingram is my starting tight end. Right, right. Yep, that's perfect. That's kind of where I'm at with it too. And if I'm going to try and trade him in my leagues, I'm going to try and trade him right now. Hopefully people aren't really thinking yep. about it, but they probably are. Like, league mates aren't as dumb as I make them out to be, so... <laughs> Some of them. Some of them are, yeah. Some we do a dynasty trade ones. show every week in the... Uh, the fish astound yeah. me sometimes. Exactly. All right. Now into the main part of the show. So for the next month, um, when you're listening to this, it'll be February 1st. For the month of February on America's Game, it is going to be quarterback month. So uh, we're going to talk quarterback dynasty rankings. We're going to talk quarterback warp. Um, quarterback prospects coming out in the draft. Um and then some other stuff for quarterbacks coming up here. So I'm going to be doing that for the next month here in February. All four episodes are going to be all about the quarterback. So today uh, I brought Mike on, and we're going to talk about quarterback uh, dynasty rankings that me and him have right now um, for the quarterback position. So uh, I got keep trade cut up as well. We can kind of um, go through theirs a little bit too. Theirs are, um, you know, theirs are always changing like daily. Yeah. So, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, as Mahomes was like three or four, now he's up to fucking two again. Um, stuff like that. So it just kind of ma makes me laugh. Like, how far Jalen Hurts has fallen. Like, I don't know if you've seen that, have you? Yeah, it's disgusting. I put him on the buys list in our Patreon, yeah. patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. So if you're in the yeah. tier that gets the buy sells, I put him in there too because I was like, what the fuck are we doing? And I thought it was maybe just some startups that I was doing because he was slipping to like six, seven. I think he went eight in a startup and I was like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it, when he slips to like four, you have that conversation in your head. You're like, should I trade up? Should I try? <laughs> there ain't right. fucking no way this dude's passing on him. And then it goes again, and you have that conversation all over again, and you're like, right. uh, fuck, I gotta, you gotta I should try. You gotta press it. the panic button. And God, go. Lee. Oh. Crazy. Um, I, he, so right now he is quarterback seven on keep trade cut. Blasphemous. Yes. Terrible. Ridiculous. Like, especially Justin Herbert ahead of him. Like, how? Um, why? Yeah, I just I just don't get it. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> so we're going to start off here with our tier one quarterbacks. Um, so I have mine up. We uh, have yours up here as well. And we have the same tier one. So I might as well just go over them together here. So I have 
Josh Allen, number one. You have Josh Allen, number one. Um, you have Jalen Hurts, number two. I have Jalen Hurts, number two. And I have Mahomes, three. You have Mahomes, three. So we're pretty lockstep there. Uh, I'm going to just ask you this. Why Josh Allen over Hurts and Mahomes for you? Josh Allen has been the most consistent out of all those quarterbacks for the last three years. Right. Whether you look at points per game or whatever, uh, he either finishes one or two. Right. <laughs> one or right. two. Uh, Mahomes and Hurts, they, you know, sometimes they'll flip flop. And we've only had like two full years of Jalen Hurts being awesome. But Josh Allen's been doing it for multiple years. And I don't see that discontinuing anytime. I mean, we talk about, oh, maybe he's going to run less or, God, Josh Allen's not running as much as he was. At the end of the year, doesn't matter. You look up and all of a sudden he's QB1 or QB2. Warp points per game, however the fuck you want to slice it. Total fantasy points. Josh Allen is that dude. So uh, QB1 for me. And if I'm on the clock at the 101, there's, like, I like the other two. That's why they're in tier one. And I think they're very close. But uh, for me personally, there's no other choice for me but Josh Allen. Yeah, I mean, they've talked about him running less, and he had, like, 12 less carries than he usually has had. <laughs> That's running Two, less, huh? Yeah, 200 yards less, okay, I give you that, but he had 15 fucking touchdowns this year just running the ball. Um, and I don't see any of that stuff change, especially because they've talked, I've heard, like, uh, the tush push isn't going to be banned. Have you heard that as well? I've heard it's going to be banned, and I heard it's not going to be banned. Right. I, either way, it doesn't matter for Josh Allen because he don't get touch push. He just fucking punches it in on his own anyways. Right. He, yeah, get, he's a f- fucking get Inside the truck. 20. It, you talked about a 15 rushing touchdowns, Eric. Just think about that. I mean, most fantasy seasons are 16 games for a player, right? Like 17 weeks, but 16 games for each individual player. I mean, he yeah. starts out almost every game with six points. Think about that. Yeah. But, I don't even think Kenny Pickett has 15 touchdowns in his fucking career. <laughs> you might be right on that one. Uh, unfortunately, I took the over on a prop bet on prize picks this year with Kenny Pickett touchdowns, and that didn't even fuck come close. Uh, 15 rushing touchdowns. Just absolutely crazy the amount of rushing touchdowns that Josh Allen ranked up this year. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to have 15 rushing touchdowns every year because the two years combined before that was 13. So probably an anomaly, but he has the ability, him and Jalen Hurts, when they're on the goal line, those guys are like a lock to get into the end zone. How many times did you just see Eagles games or Bills game this year? They get on the one-yard line and ain't going to fucking James Cook or DeAndre Swift. It's Josh Allen or Hurts taking it right up the middle. So I think those two, I almost put them in a tier of their own. Just because I don't see Mahomes do, being able to do that, but Mahomes has the ability to throw up 40, 50 touchdowns every single year. Cool. Not like these guys don't either, but um, yeah, yeah, I almost put those guys in their own tier just off of their rushing ability. I, I put a lot of stock into rushing stats and rushing ability for these quarterbacks. Um, as you'll see on my list, I you know probably value somebody a little bit higher that maybe I shouldn't just off of rushing ability. Um, and rushing yards and rushing stats that they're going to get for you at the quarterback spot. But, yeah, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, those guys um, can put up 30 passing touchdowns as well, as as well as score 14, 15 rushing touchdowns on the ground. You know, Mahomes is almost like a lock for 30 touchdown passes every single year. Uh, this year he only had 27, but he's pretty damn close every year once they get him some more weapons this year. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's – pretty much it for my top three and any other thoughts on those guys no i really like that breakdown too because that's how i do it when i look at it right not only they're finished but uh mm-hmm. the difference between josh allen and jalen hurts versus patrick mahomes is they have a very high floor because of the rushing touchdown production right. the rushing yards not that mahomes can't do it but he doesn't do it in the way those guys do um right. but he's still tier one because like you said he could throw 5,000 yards, 5,200 yards, and 40-plus touchdowns at any given year, even without Tyreek Hill. Now, mm-hmm. took a little bit of a hit this year. Now we're seeing his value rise back because people are like, oh, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is really good at football. Now maybe the stats aren't there in the playoffs. Like It's not like, oh, my God, eye-popping. But this was also the worst chief offense I think we've ever seen under Patrick Mahomes with no weapons. Travis Kelsey had moments where he showed a sign of age. Your number one receiving option was a rookie that you're relying on who did most of his work underneath and was a yak guy. They had nobody to stretch the field. What happens next year, though, if they bring somebody in, whether they draft somebody or they sign a T. Higgins or they they go out and they try to get a Mike Evans? 
Um, maybe the Colts let Michael Pittman Jr. go and like he gets a true number one weapon again. Still deserves to be tier one. Um, I think he's mm-hmm. he's still going to be in the conversation for 101 overall. Just personally for me, no. And that's how I do my tiers though. Like I have my preferences, but that's still a dude. Like if somebody took Pat Mahomes 101, I wouldn't go, well, you're crazy. <laughs> how dare right. you, right? Like right. good pick. <laughs> On to the next. Same thing for Jalen Hurts, right? Any Anytime we talk about tiers here for ranks, I'm comfortable with any of them at that spot, and that's yeah. why I put them in a tier. I just list them out with my personal preferences. Yep, that's the same same way I do it. I'll, I'll do my personal preferences, but I'm honestly fine with anybody in that tier. If I, like, uh, get depending on the league, if it's a point-per-carry league, let's say, um, I'm going to value Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson. I'm going to value those guys maybe ahead of, you know, like right now I have uh, Anthony Richardson seventh. I might value him over a Joe Burrow or a C.J. Stroud just off a point-per-carry. So um, it can fluctuate by league for me. That's usually how I do it. Yep. Um, so on to our tier two, um, my tier two consists of five players. I have Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and Justin Herbert. Mike in his tier two has Lamar Jackson as well. Joe Burrow, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, and Justin Herbert. Um, so we pretty much have the same five or six players. You have Kyler Murray up in there. Um, I actually think ours are in order pretty much too, other than Kyler. Other than Kyler. Uh, I'm a big Kyler fan. I was a big fan of buying him at the discount this offseason. Uh, one of the reasons, too, it's, it's a little bit of projecting, but, you know, where they pick, and we look at every single mock draft, and we do one every single week here on South Harmon on Monday nights, and mm-hmm. so far it's like a lock, man. Marvin Harrison Jr. falling to four. Now you give me Kyler, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Trey, what they call him, McBridge, I see in the Discord. I don't know where the fuck that came from, but Trey McBride. And if they bring somebody else in too, like I get pretty excited, man. When Kyler was healthy and like balling with weapons, that dude was a QB (coughs) one, QB two overall type. So Mm. to rank him at eight, uh, I know it's, you know, probably not the cool thing to do, but uh, I want to be ahead of the curve. And I feel like eight puts me ahead of the curve where I want to take him before Justin Herbert. Mm. My one thing with Kyler, um, I'm going to actually look for his stats on this page real quick. Um, My one thing with Kyler, though, man, is just in his career, yeah, I know he hasn't had, like, the greatest pass weapons um, in his career so far, but um, still has never had a 4,000-yard passing season. He's come close. He had a 3,971 season in 2020. Um, 2021, 20, 37, 87. That's the closest he's gotten to 4,000 yards. Yeah, yards don't mean a whole lot, but um, his like yeah, his rushing ability is great, but it's not like Lamar level great, you know, where he's putting up 700, 800 yards. Um, 2021, 423, 2022, 418. So it's not like he's been scrambling like Lamar and Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts and those guys. Hasn't had like the rushing touchdowns that those guys have had either. Five in 2021, three in 2022. I'm not even going to count this year just because he was off of the injury. Um, so that's why I just don't have Kyler as high as you. Like his numbers haven't been as, as great for me. And I don't, he's never had a touchdown season over 30 uh, passing either. 26 was his most that year. He threw for 3,971. So. I don't know what it is with Kyler. Like he starts off super hot and he just fades every single time down the stretch. Uh, yeah. Not like I said, not counting this season, but that's just why I personally haven't had him um, that high. He, I think he's in my yeah, he's in my next tier. So it's not like I'm like super down on him, but that's why I don't have Kyler up in that tier for me. But the other guys were all in lockstep on. We pretty much have them all in the same order other than Kyler, uh, but Lamar. Rushing upside, his passing is getting better. It's not like he's the greatest passer on earth, but he has improved quite a bit. Um, so I got to give him his props on that one. I think he only had, uh, where is Lamar on this list? There he is. He had 24 touchdowns, seven picks this year. So it wasn't like his MVP season where he had 36 passing touchdowns. Um, but still, he was pretty damn good this year. 3,678 yards. Definitely the highest he's ever had in his career, I believe. Um, Burrow, Burrow over Stroud. I've seen a lot of people have Stroud in their top three, top four. Me and you are lockstep on him at six. 
Uh, so why why do you have like Burrow over Stroud for me or for you? He was a great story, um, mm-hmm. a, a good rookie year, a very very good rookie year. Don't let me undersell it too, but people were doing a lot of comparisons to you know he's like Justin Herbert's rookie year. Well, Justin Herbert's rookie year was twenty two plus fantasy points per game. Like that is also one of the reasons I have Kyler up so high is he's one of the few quarterbacks in the league that's a threat for a twenty two point per game plus you know, scoring, like elite territory, one, two, three, four, top five QB, at least projection. Like he's done it twice in his career already. Justin Herbert did that his rookie year, right? Like, so the hype was there. Um, Stroud was more in like what Kyler did this past year, you know, more in that 18 point per game, right? He had some great moments. It was a nice story. He had a great rookie year. But to elevate him into the elite category and to other guys who are just dropping 20 burgers every single week plus, like that that feels a little bit risky and we talked about it at the top the one thing he doesn't have is he's mobile but he doesn't use his legs right so he doesn't have that safe floor so he has to like now compete with people want to put him in that territory of patrick mahomes well we like patrick mahomes because he can throw for five thousand yards and 40 touchdowns are you going to project that for cj stroud right off the bat like that feels a little too rich for me um so I like him. I'll still take him. I'll never probably get any of them way, yeah. the way Keep Trade Cut has him and the community feels about him. So that's why I put him on the sales list. Not because, like, oh, you got to get off of him, but just the value doesn't seem to actually match up to, like, what the production's going to be. So that's yeah. the kind of quarterback where I go, okay, well, let me tear down to a, you know, a Kyler, a Herbert, a Joe Burrow, if that's a thing, a Jalen Hurts, if he's fucking falling to right. seven on Keep Trade Cut. And you're going to tell me I get any kind of plus? Fuck, I'd do that for those dudes straight up. This is easy. This is like easy money here. You give me a second, I'll be over the moon. Yeah, shit. If you really wanted to tear down from Stroud to Kyler, I think you could get Kyler a first and probably like a high second on top of it. That is fucking insane. I I mean, if you tried that trade right now, I bet somebody would do that right now. It'd be, uh, I bet you could get that kind of a, a trade package back to you. You're going to have to go throw out some offers. I think i got a few Stroud shares still left over. But <laughs> not that I don't like the kid. All right? He's awesome. I love what he right. did this year. Just to put him in that same conversation, right? Like, I, we saw it coming. Um, you know, people ask, like, where where CJ Stroud ranked. And I'm like, this dude is going to be in the conversation as top three. I don't think it's right. But, but damn. Right. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, I saw him go 101 in a startup, Eric. I could, I believe it. With a straight I, face, somebody took him one of, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. Like I said, I'm with you. I, I really like the player. He had 23 touchdowns, only five interceptions this year, threw for 4,000 yards his rookie year. He only ran the ball for 39 times, 167 yards, three touchdowns. So he averaged four yards a carry. Um, so it wasn't like he was out here like fucking Josh Allen running for a hundred, you know, seven hundred extra yards on top of it or mm-hmm. anything. Um, like hundred sixty seven is like what you expect like fucking like Mac Jones to get or something, you know, something like small. Uh so it's not like he's one of these super elite rushing guys. Like I think he has the ability to be, but that's just not his game. Um he's more for standing in the pocket and firing some fucking piss missiles in there to Tank Dell and, and all these guys. So piss missiles. <laughs> he, he was throwing some in that uh couple of those games, especially against Cleveland. But anyways, yeah, he's just um just a step below for me. I still like him. I like Burrow over him because I think Burrow has the ability. He has the weapons around him right now. To Burrow could be a walking 40 fucking touchdowns every single season. Like, I think he's got that ability as long as he can stay fucking healthy and all that. Um, with Jamar Chase, hopefully they can re sign T. Higgins or if they draft somebody uh, to replace him that's another good player, whatever it is. I think Jamar or Jamar Chase and Burrow, like that has the ability to be 15 plus touchdowns every year just between those two. Um, and then, you, you know, Burrow with the rest of his stuff. So I think Burrow for me, and he, his rushing ability is probably on par with Stroud's like numbers wise. Um, but Burrow could run for a little bit more than that too. It's not like Burrow's just a fucking statue. Um, Burrow will run a little bit when he, 
you know, when the opportunity presents itself. So that's why I have Burrow just a step ahead for me. Now if Stroud gets a Marvin Harrison Jr. type weapon, which is, you know, not going to happen. Maybe I, I change my mind on that, but um, I'll take the Burrow and Chase stack just a step above Stroud. Um, Anthony Richardson, I think we both like him just because what he did show his first couple games that he did play this year, um, just his rushing ability alone, man, like if he has a full healthy season, the amount of rushing stats and numbers that that kid could put up could be break fantasy is like his ability right now. I'm going to pull up his stats um, from his games this year as well real quick. Um yeah, he was so in his four games he had twenty five carries, one hundred thirty six yards, four touchdowns. Um, obviously, that doesn't you know show the whole thing. Uh, let's put up his rushing stats from a game log perspective. Yeah, I got you. Forty yards and a tutty, yeah, thirty five and two touchdowns, fifty six and a touchdown, and then his uh, his fourth game he was hurt. Yeah, early he got on. hurt that one game. Yeah, yeah. so he only so, had five I mean, yards. Yeah, so he had literally a touchdown in every single game that he played besides for the game that he got hurt in early, uh, which he was rocking and rolling in that fucking game anyways. He was uh, 9 for 12, 98 yards right off the get-go, and then he got hurt like early on in that first quarter, I think it was. Yep. Um, but this dude has the ability to score rushing touchdowns in every single game uh, right off the bat there. So, like... Him having the double-digit touchdowns just in rushing every single season, I think, is almost a lock. I think this dude's putting up more than ten touchdowns every single season. His uh, his three healthy games on a yeah. point scoring basis: twenty-one point nine QB four, seventeen point seven QB nineteen, and twenty-nine point six QB two. <laughs> so when we talk, uh, I talk about that uh, that twenty point per game threshold. That's the dude who can get in the Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen level pretty easily. Absolutely. And his passing, yes, it's not the greatest, but it wasn't like it was completely terrible. Um, he's only going to get better with his passing as well as he goes on here. So uh, kind of think of Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen when they started off. Their passing was horrendous. Um, it took three, four seasons for them to really figure it out, get their p completion percentage up, um, learn how to throw better, how to you know just do everything better. And it took them a couple seasons. It's going to take Anthony Richardson a couple seasons too. He's not going to be a finished product here for a couple more seasons at least. But I know every single season he's going to have this rock-solid rushing ability to put up God, 800 rushing yards and double-digit touchdowns every single year. And I think that's the floor. That's not even the fucking ceiling for Anthony Richardson. So, Once I upon a time, Eric. Once <laughs> upon a time, I was in a startup. Okay, mm -hmm. We had another guy who looked like this, kind of played like this, and I think I was in the third round. I needed a quarterback. And my choice was down to Carson Wentz or Josh Allen. Yep. And let you, That was in there after their second year. Right? right, and I made the wrong fucking decision, <laughs> and regret it ever since. Right, one of them can barely hold on to a fucking job in the league, and the other dude, we talked about as our QB one. So, uh -huh. don't let that fool you because when you watch, you go, okay, he's a little raw. He makes some some boneheaded plays. Now I get it. Josh Allen completely changed his mechanics, and we saw like a rise out of him in his third year that I don't think we'd ever seen out of anybody else. But mm -hmm. this guy's got the the complete foundation, and I would say he's even more of a prospect and athletically gifted and a better thrower of the football right now than where Josh Allen was. Right. And if this is a point per carry league that you're in, holy shit, Richardson is easily in my top five. He's over Stroud and Burrow for me easily. Then you're talking about Lamar Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, like Allen hurts Lamar and Richardson and Josh Fields are your probably elite five rushing quarterbacks right now in the league. So Richardson is definitely up there in a point per carry league for me. So I would have him higher than that for sure. Boost, a point per carry boost him up. Boost yeah. him up. Yep. And then um, the last one we'll just talk about real quick, Justin Herbert. I am curious to see how he's going to be with Jim Harbaugh too. It's not like Jim Harbaugh has had like amazing quarterbacks in the past that he's produced. Um, he had Kaepernick who, you know, obviously was a rushing dynamo, dynamo. So he did really good with that. Um, I just don't know if, I mean, Herbert's still going to be a really good player. I'm not going to say he's not going to, he's going to be some dog shit player with, uh, Jim Harbaugh, but I am a little bit 
wondering if like these 5,000 yard passing seasons that Herbert had like two years ago, I think those might be a thing of the past. So he might be down to like 4,500 yards. We're in even the day. Then, and that's still good. <laughs> we're in the day and age where teams throw the ball a fuck ton, right? Yeah. Throw to set up the run. Um, Jim Harbaugh, I think I saw a tweet where it was, I'd have to verify it, but it was only like twice in his entire career. Has he ever, has he ever passed the ball more than he's ran the ball? <laughs> right. <laughs> Even with uh, Andrew Luck, he only did it one time. So uh, I'm kind of good, man. Like the this higher, you looked at it on the surface and you're like, okay, you know, welcome back to the NFL, Jim. Kind of excited if we get Staley out of there. And then you start to think about it and I go, Man, this is a guy who's had like Wilton Spate and John Corn and Jake Rudock <laughs> and all these shitty trash can quarterbacks. What has he ever done? Like, who's been the dude? Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck. <laughs> Even this year, like, J.J. McCarthy's a prospect, may or may not get first round draft capital. We'll see. But the, even that's like a guy I look at and I go, I don't know why we're like super excited. He never got asked to do much. He wasn't like super flashy, didn't put up huge numbers. It makes it a hard evaluation. Fuck, what if this is like what Justin Herbert's going to become? All the talent in the world, but we just don't ever let him throw the football. So you couple that with the situation you and I have talked about when we do these deep dives, these crystal balls, these looks into uh, future outlooks of teams. And the cap hell that this fucking team's in. And what are they doing with Keenan Allen and Mike Will and Quentin Johnston has been a fucking bust. And they got to get out of a lot of it. Like, I was already kind of cooling on Justin Herbert. And this is the one that just sent me, okay. <laughs> like, he's still awesome. I like him. But dead last in this tier. And uh, if you want to pay me for him, by all means, I'll jump down to the next tier and take the pluses on top. It sounds like you might have him in the third tier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just tough. There. Like right. there, there's a scenario too. Like as we become more and more like rookie fever, rookie draft hype, uh, as the community kind of catches up, putting Caleb, Jaden Daniels, maybe Drake May, etc., over him. If Justin Fields ends up getting traded to the Falcons, like that's a thing where I could like flip flop those two as well. And uh, yeah, he might become that third tier kind of guy, Eric. So yeah, if you believe like Mike is talking here about Justin Herbert. Um, maybe you can take your Justin Herbert, go to the 101 team, and see if you can get 101 for him. Maybe yeah. you can get 101 and maybe something else small on it, and you can go grab Caleb Williams and get a little plus on top of it if you think you know Herbert's going to fall here a little bit. So that's an idea to do with some trades possibly. That's a good idea, right? Especially doing it now before people really catch up. And I think you're right. right. I think you get a plus on it. I think you do get a sizable plus. Somebody might give you the 101 and 201 for, for Herbert. Yeah, possibly. Because Key Trade uh, Cut still got him high, and he's still going high in uh, hey, he's all these startups. Yeah, fucking Jalen Hurts, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd do that. Try that one first, okay? Just yeah. <laughs> just a one-for-one one swap. Don't even ask for anything extra. Just take your Herbert Center for Hurts. Yeah, for sure. Um, next one up here, we're going to go over Tier 3. Number three here, uh, t tier three for me, I have Jordan Love leading off that tier at number nine overall, Tua, number 10, Kyler, 11, Dak, um, I'm sorry, Brock at 12, and Dak Prescott at 13 for me. Um, and then you have in your three, you have the rookies in there right now. I haven't added my rookies yet, but your tier three is Caleb Williams, Trevor Lawrence, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and Justin Fields. Um so, yeah, interesting with the rookies in there right now. If I, I'm not sure if I would have all three of the rookies in my tier three. They'd probably be pretty damn close. Um, so that's interesting to look at so far. You have Trevor Lawrence a lot higher than I do. Why don't we start off with him since he's higher on your list? Why do you have Trevor Lawrence um, so much higher than some of these guys that, that I have above him? To be completely honest, I would rather have right now Jaden Daniels or Drake May, the picks that could become those guys, than Trevor Lawrence. The thing I have to acknowledge is the fantasy community, the dynasty community still fucking loves this guy. Right. So I gotta rank him high because this is just based off like where I would take them in a startup. But if I were to take them like in this range, right? You know, I don't think I would rather have the one or Trevor Lawrence over the 101. So that one was a pretty easy one for me. And if that 101 I'm projecting to be Caleb Williams, I'm going to put him over in my dynasty ranks. Now, 
when you get to these other guys, I go, this is kind of 50, 50, but I'm not going to take the rookie pick. I'm going to take the, the Trevor Lawrence and then see if I can't parlay that into Trevor Lawrence's value amongst the community. Cause I think people still love him, right? They still look at him as generational quarterback prospect. Oh, he, he had some bad moments, but he had some great moments this year and look at him. He looks like fucking Jesus out there playing football. Like people still love this guy. So I'm still going to take him pretty high in the startup and I'm still going to rank him high, but this is a ship that I think is kind of starting to sail for me, right? If I'm cooling on Justin Herbert, I am definitely fucking cool on Trevor Lawrence. All right. like, I am good, man. That's that's why I have him further down. Once we get to my uh, rankings here, I'll mention where I have him. But yeah, I mean, I'll take easily Jordan Love, Tua, Kyler, Brock Purdy, and Dak over Trevor Lawrence. I've seen enough from those five guys that I just named over Trevor Lawrence compared to his stats. Like Trevor Lawrence had like that two game stretch like late last season where he was cooking, but man, ever since then it's just like all of his other games are just mid. Like Jordan Love is on the rise, especially after his playoff performances. Um, he's got every young weapon you can imagine is with Jordan Love that's gonna grow with him and learn with him. Like I just see Jordan Love with a fucking rocket strapped to his back going up rankings here. Uh Tua, Scott Waddle and, and Tyreek still, he's gonna have a chain. So he's got weapons around him. Uh two has like been a walking forty four hundred passing yards and thirty touchdowns every year, it seems like the um since Mike McDaniels got there. Kyler, his rushing ability puts me above like Brock and Dak. You had him a little higher than I did. Um, but I'm definitely gonna put Kyler up there with his rushing ability and the fact that, like you said, I'm already banking on Marvin Harrison Jr. going there. Um, so that's kind of another reason why I have Kyler a little bit higher than those guys too. Brock Purdy, I could get behind maybe moving him down a spot or two, maybe the start of the fourth tier instead of being in my third tier right now. Just, um, I thought he finished, you know, had a MVP type season. Then he ran into Baltimore and it went all downhill from there. The playoffs haven't been that great. So maybe I could adjust my rankings there, maybe move him down a spot, um, his, he does have a little bit of a rushing ability. It's kind of like CJ Stroud esque. Maybe he gets you 160, 200 rushing yards. Um, so that's not like he's a complete zero there. And then Dak, man, like he's got CD Lamb still attached to him. They're going to pass the ball still. Um, it's like almost, they were almost like a better passing team uh, without Kellen Moore with McCarthy this year calling the plays. So um, Dak is, was up there for the MVP. He led the league in touchdown passes this year with 36. Um, I think Dak's kind of underrated, man. Like the fantasy yeah. points that he put up this year, um, they're right up there with with all these other guys. So I mean, Dak, um, I think he's a little underrated in a lot of these stats. I definitely would have him over Trevor Lawrence, like I do right now. Um, I should probably make the move and put uh, put him over Purdy too. Um, I could get behind putting him over Kyler as well, but I think with Kyler getting like a Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, and some of his other weapons that he has, I think it'll put me maybe a step above um, Dak with uh, for Kyler with me. It's crazy to think too, like when you talk about Dak, because I have him in a, a tier just below. But a lot of this is because I have rookies and, and you don't. So, right. Like if I were to take those out, the tiers would look a little bit different here. But I got him right, kind of where a keep trade cut does at 15. Um, but the the crazy part is. It feels like the fantasy community as a whole has him even lower. Right? Right. <laughs> like they, they really don't. So I do think he's a buy uh, for all he's the reasons you kind of listed. Yeah, 15 and keep trade cut right now is Dak. Nuts. And he's 30 Nuts. years old. It's not like he's like out of his prime or anything. If anything, he's like right in the middle of his prime. Like, yeah, everybody that we've listed ahead of him is all younger. Yes, I get that. Um, but 30 isn't bad, guys. Like... This dude's probably going to play till he's like 37, 38. He's got another seven, eight good years in him. Like Stafford's still playing. Aaron Rodgers is still fucking playing. Like Dak's going to be fine. Like we could probably get another at least eight to 10 years out of Dak. So I'm not worried about Dak's age or anything like that. I'm with you on that one. And so. yeah, it's going to be Dak with CD fucking lamb. <laughs> As Fizzle would say, CD goat. Uh, right. You know, the football too, so. 
good combination. Yeah. Dak, underrated. Um, I know they have him as as a, a QB 15, but they also do have a 24 early first ranked way above Dak, uh, 24 mid first above Dak, too. So you can kind of just put three rookie quarterbacks in there as well. Like, that's mm-hmm. what a key trade cut is. So it's more like QB 18. So. Mm-hmm. We are actually pretty far ahead of consensus, at least on keep trade cut ranks. Do you think if you could go into a league right now, like say you're in like a win now mode and you have the 104, let's say, um, which is probably going to be whoever the third quarterback is, would you go and send that pick for Dak Prescott and you maybe get Dak and a second or something like that back? I wouldn't right now, uh, just because it's still gaining value. I mean, mm-hmm. we just started rookie hype season with the senior bowl kicking off this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let that baby build up until the NFL draft, if that's the kind of move I want to do, because you're going to get a lot more than, than what you can get right now. Um, cool. But I would say, though, if people really want the, uh, you know, if they're like, they're locked in where they go, I'd rather have the the 107 versus Dak. That's kind of the move where you said, if you got one of these mid to late first round picks, as the value starts to build, that's kind of the play if you're going to, Go for mm-hmm. the contender push to see if you can buy Dak for just that single first and peak mm-hmm. rookie hype season. Okay. I yeah, I think that's something you could definitely try. Um, all right, on to tier four. Um, I did make a change with mine. I, I did uh, swap Dak and Purdy. I did put Purdy at the top of my tier four. So I made that while we were live on air here. But my real tier four before that was just Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. So I only had two guys in there. And your tier four, you have a lot more than I do. So you have Dak, Jordan Love, Tua, Deshaun Watson, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, and Bryce Young. Um, anybody in there you wanted to highlight? Bryce Young for me, pretty big buy. Community fucking hates him. Uh, keep trade cut price says less than a first. I just made a deal for him a few days ago. Uh, bought him for like the 112, Greg Dolchich and Mac Jones in a best ball league. Wow. That's straight up buy. But guy who was a number one pick, there's some very good analytical plot graphs going around about Bryce Young actually not being terrible and ranking actually pretty high in what he did. It didn't look the greatest. Didn't have weapons worth of shit. Adam Thielen was the best he could do. Um, I didn't think Frank Wright was a fucking very good hire in the first place. I mean, there's a reason you get fired from Indianapolis. He, he wasn't good. One of those guys who's probably a better OC than he ever will be a head coach. Um, I do like it, though. Uh, I do like buying into Bryce Young. I don't hate him. And for the price, like, I will have all the Bryce Young shares. If I miss, right. I miss. But... You also got to think, too, we just watched Mac Jones finish his third year. Like, he got a full three years, and he's been objectively terrible in year two and was god-awful in year three. Um, But he's still got three years of starting. Bryce Young had a bad rookie year. He's getting two more years of being the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, even if he's ass. So there's some positional certainty, some, uh, some, some relative safety in, in acquiring Bryce Young for that. And are you getting, in this class, even though it's fucking amazing, are you getting a quarterback at the 110, 111, 112 that's better than Bryce Young? Are you going to get a receiver that's better? Maybe. But you also just might get kind of a mid guy that doesn't really mean anything for you. So super flex leagues, if I can acquire a guy coming off his rookie year, even if it wasn't the greatest for a late pick, that fucking do that all day. All day. Especially one that I know is getting two more years at least. Even if he's yeah. ha- horrible. Kenny Pickett looks like he's going to get a third fucking year, and he's been god-awful, Eric. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you didn't even mention one of the biggest points, and that's his new coach, Dave Canellis. Um, mm-hmm. He turned around. Um, he was Baker. in Seattle there, I think, before, and then he went to Tampa. Yep, yep. Um, so with Tampa Bay, obviously you guys saw what he did this year with Baker Mayfield in one season. He turned around Baker Mayfield's career. He's gonna Baker Mayfield's going to get another – 20 million dollar contract if not more than that probably more than that with tampa bay here um just to stick around because he did so damn well this year um so i like bryce's young's opportunity there with dave canales being his head coach hopefully working with him i don't know if he's calling the plays or not i don't think that's been determined yet but i would assume canales is going to call plays at least that's what i would do if i was a head coach um and my ass was on the line every single week i'm going to call the plays so hopefully he does that with Bryce Young, calls a place for him. Uh, they can get some more weapons around Bryce Young. So I like that call for sure. Um, one other one I did want to mention that you have in this tier. I have them in the tier below. 
Um, the next tier is Deshaun Watson. So um, the 32 beat writers um, Twitter put out today, that was that, that thing you were mentioning about with Trey McBridge. Somebody uh, spell checked McBride and it went to McBridge or something. So that's why it says that on there. I got gotcha. you. Um, so I saw somebody's comment on there. Um, I think we had Deshaun Watson was equal to like the 107 draft pick or something like that. And mm-hmm. somebody wrote, Ooh, why would you even spend a first round pick on Deshaun Watson? And how is he worth a first round pick and all this shit? Like guys, Deshaun Watson is not this fucking bad. I just refuse to believe it. Maybe it's a delusional optimist in me or being a fucking Browns fan, but uh, Deshaun Watson is not this bad. Like this dude before all of his bullshit was right there with Patrick Mahomes is one or two quarterback in dynasty, the number one guy or the number two guy coming off of his career year with Houston there. Um, yeah, he missed well, however long he missed basically, um, two seasons worth almost, uh, snaps there. He missed a lot of this year as well with his shoulder injury. I just refuse to believe that Deshaun Watson is this bad. Plus Deshaun Watson's rushing ability as well on top of it. Um, I just think Deshaun Watson is somebody that should still be valued pretty highly. And if you can get Deshaun Watson for your 108, 19, 110 draft pick, you fucking do it every single time. I don't care how good your quarterback position is. I think he has the ability to shoot up these dynasty ranks next year with a fantastic season. So Deshaun Watson is definitely a buy for me if he's going to go this low and people are still dogging, dogging him. Um, Regardless what you think of him as a person, like, yeah, he's probably a piece of shit human being, but I don't care. I I want fantasy points, and this guy can, can provide me fantasy points. Keep trade cut has him even lower than that, Eric. Right, exactly. And it's just because people don't like him, the person, because of all of his bullshit he either did or did not do, whatever it is. Um, he basically, according to keep trade cut, cost you an early second. Yeah, if you can buy Deshaun Watson for your 111, 112, if you're a championship contender, I'm doing it every day of the week. Same deals I sent out for Bryce Young everywhere I sent out for Deshaun Watson. Now, I probably sent 30 fucking offers out, got one accepted, and it was for Bryce Young. Everybody else hit me with the, oh, you got to include your 25 first, too. (laughs) All right, well, fuck you. All right, I'm good. (laughs) But, you know, go out and explore it at least, right? Send all those fucking spam offers out. You know, you mm. got a one, like Eric said, you got a 108, 109, 110, 111, 112. Mm. Send that shit out. Fucking, you got a 201. Send that baby out. <laughs> See right. if you get Deshaun Especially Watson if, or Bryce Young. Fuck if it. If everybody hates Deshaun Watson this much for stuff he did in his personal life, then fucking do it. Like, I mean, you brought up the fact that once upon a time he was right up there with those guys. Yes. Right. And, and the people have heard that narrative. But just look at last year, right? Uh, week one, 21.7 fantasy points, QB5. Not bad. Week mm-hmm. two, he was horrible. Horrible yep. versus Pittsburgh. 12.6. Uh, week three against Tennessee, 21.2 fantasy points. Week seven, he was injured. Uh, only played, only had five attempts. So negative fantasy points. That stuck with people. But his last two fucking games he played, week nine and ten, 19 fantasy points, 17.2. And then you see Joe Flacco come in and go on a what should be, God damn it, NFL <laughs> comeback player of the year run. Yep. Just dotting up fucking Amari Cooper and David and Joku and that offense opening up, you know, we thought they were dead in the water after Nick Chubb got hurt and Deshaun Watson hadn't played in the NFL well, uh, but for fantasy he was just fine. Hadn't played well, we thought it was dead, and all of a sudden that offense was fucking humming at the end of the year, you know. Right. Unfortunately, they ran into Houston and that happened, but... Imagine what happens to Sean Watson comes back and he was already putting up 20 fucking fantasy points and they, they figured out how to get Amari Cooper and David Njoku involved in this offense and, you know, how to use Jerome Ford in the way they did. Right. I, for the price of a, you know, fucking J.J. McCarthy, <laughs> sign me up for a lot of Deshaun Watson, man. Sign yeah. me the fuck up. Absolutely. I agree with you. Uh, one other quick one I wanted to mention. Uh, you have him in the 
a tier above this, and I have him in this fourth tier, is Justin Fields. Uh, so we can probably all thinking that Justin Fields is going to end up um, a quarterback of a different franchise this offseason. So we don't know where it could be. Could it be the Raiders? Could it be the Atlanta Falcons? Could it be, you know, the Vikings? Probably not the Vikings. Uh, anywhere else, Pittsburgh maybe, who knows? So Justin Fields is going to end up somewhere else this offseason. Um, I think putting him like in these tier right now is more than fine just because the dude has 1,000 yard rushing upside ability um, in him. So wherever he goes, he's going to have that ability in him no matter what. Um, if he gets to an Atlanta, fuck, man, he might have to go up higher just because he's going to have B. John Robinson, uh, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, like three of the most athletic beast fucking prospects that we've seen in quite some time coming into the, the league. And he's going to have them as running mates possibly. Um, or if he goes to Pittsburgh, like he's going to have Pickens and Deontay Johnson, a very good running game. Um, obviously Arthur Smith is there now, so he can kind of run, you know, a play action type offense um, with that running backs. So that could be interesting, even though, you know, Arthur Smith hasn't really had too much success with quarterbacks, though he did make Ryan Tannehill very good there for a couple of years. Um, so I think it's going to depend on where Fields lands. But I think right now where we have him, you know, in this three to four range is safe with the ability to go up still. Yeah, uh, I, I'm a little bit more bullish on him. He cleaned up a lot of stuff in the second half of the year. That was a concern earlier, right? He was he was lackadaisical in his effort on drop back sometimes, taking far too long. You know, when you saw him get hurt and Tyson Bajant come in, it was like a night and day difference between the two on how fast Bajant would hit his back foot and then get rid of the football or take off and run. And you're like, oh, man, if only Justin Fields would do that. He heard y'all. He fuck came back in the second half of the year and he did it. And then he started pushing the ball downfield. But another benefit, like... He was doing shit last year when he was started off so slow and everybody was out, and then he came on like gangbusters and fucking hammered the rest of the year. Just ridiculous rushing yards. This year, started slow, came on in the second half of the year and really improved. He's going to be a starting quarterback for somebody next year. And if he's a starting quarterback next year for somebody, with the amount of fantasy points he can put up on any given week, that is a dude that I want on my team, right? The rushing floor is ridiculously high. And I like the strides he's made in the passing game. Eric, just think about some of these numbers, right? He only played 13 games last year. Five weeks, he was a top four or better quarterback. Finish. Five weeks. Five fucking weeks. 28.9 fantasy points. 33, 33 fucking fantasy points, right? Yeah. In normal PPR scoring, you know, four-point passing, touchdown, all that shit. 33 fucking QB1 overall on a week. And this is a guy like people want to write off and be like, ah, you know, QB20. <laughs> Fuck <Yeah>. y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. so I'd kill if I get QB20 that'll score me 33 fantasy points on a given week. You know, yeah. can run for 100 yards and throw for three touchdowns. Yeah, and the dude had DJ Moore like his whole three years in, in Chicago. Like that was any fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> He had DJ Moore for one goddamn year yeah, out of his for career. for one year, yep. And he's had, you know, Cole Komet finally came on this year. He's had him the last, you know, whatever, two or three years, but Komet's really only come on last year and then more this year. Right. Darnell Mooney was, he's a good player, but the dude's a wide receiver too at best. Like, and that was his number one there for two years. Fuck, he might be a wide receiver four on most teams. Like, Mooney is just kind of meh. Like. Yeah, I mean... I think he's a decent player, but I think a lot of the injuries probably sapped a lot of his right uh, stuff from him. But, yeah, I mean, Fields, I think this is a safe spot to put him for now until we do see his new situation. Um, and then the last one I wanted to bring up that we have a difference on is Jordan Love. So I moved him up to quarterback nine, um, especially after his playoff performances. I moved him above to uh, Dak and Brock and all these guys. I have him at nine. You have Jordan Love at 16. Um, so I'm just going to get your uh, your takes on these ones. Where do you think Jordan Love ranked in passing yards this year out of all the quarterbacks? Out of all of them? I thought Adam asked me this question. Was he number two? No, he was seventh. Seventh, okay. 4,159 yards. Where do you think he was in touchdown passes? 
Number three. Close. He was number two. He beat out Brock. That was the number two one. Fuck. Yeah. He had 32 touchdown passes, which was four behind the leader of Dak Prescott. Um, 32 touchdowns to 11 picks in his first full season starting starting for the uh, Packers. 4,159 yards. Um, like It's not like he's going to stop learning um, and not getting better, you know? Like, Jordan Love is just going to ascend and ascend and ascend. I think he should easily be, um, if you're doing a startup this season, a super flex startup at least, he should be in the conversation to be a first-round pick easily um, to build your team around. I think that's where he's at. You look at all those weapons around him, Musgrave and Kraft at tight end. You got Jaden uh, Reed. You got Christian Watson. You got Romeo Dobbs, Dontavian Wicks. Um, Aaron Jones is a little older. I'm sure they're going to get another running back. He's got a pretty solid O-line ahead of him. Um, obviously, they can get a little better there. But, man, he's got all the pieces around him to succeed right now. And to see what he did in his first year starting, he far exceeded my expectations. So that's why I have Jordan Love just a little bit higher because I think he's only getting better. Where Tua, okay, maybe we've seen the best of Tua. Um, Kyler, maybe he gets a little bit better here with Marvin Harrison. I think we've seen the best of Dak. Brock Purdy, this is probably the best Brock Purdy's ever going to do. I think Jordan Love has the ability to... Um, maybe even surpass like a Justin Herbert or get in the conversation here with Joe Burrow and CJ Stroud. So that's why I have Jordan Love a little bit higher. Um, what What's your thinking on Jordan Love? I can get behind it. And, and in reality, we're not all that different. You got him at nine. I got him at 16. But you take out the three rookies I have in there. Right. Now it's QB 13. There's four spots difference. And if I'm going to argue anything, you know, just personal preference i think jordan love is awesome uh but i talk about my love for dak and just how underrated he is and what the cd lamb connection like the age thing doesn't really come into play because it's a dude who could throw for 5040 mm-hmm. <laughs> like Dak, he led the league in touchdowns this year uh justin fields i just talk glowingly about him and a lot of that's rushing floor just how high it is every single every single one and the trevor lawrence one is just t law or or jordan love I think the community is probably, you know, kind of split on these people, but it just seems like the the Jordan Love distaste from the multiple years hasn't completely gone away. The fact that, you know, he looked god awful when he was in there at times early for Aaron Rodgers. They, we didn't see him. Rodgers, you know, kept him off the field with his bullshit. Just, I'm coming back. All right, one more year, you know, this kind of thing. So I don't think it's quite caught up yet. But I don't hate it, Eric. Like, if you're going to be ahead of the curve, be ahead of the curve on a guy like Jordan Love because, really, in all honesty, he did it with a bunch of young wide receivers that we didn't expect fucking dick all from, right? right? Jane Reed was impressive. Dontavian Wicks was impressive. I've never been a fan of Romeo Dobbs until this year, and I'm like, man, this motherfucker is actually kind of a value. He just goes out there and catches fucking balls and produces, and from a best ball standpoint, that's a dude I definitely want to have. Uh, Bo Melton. <laughs> Jordan Love made fucking Bo Melton. Like, that was a guy we were high on, what, three years ago? Like, as a slot option. (laughs) Resurrected that fucking guy out of nowhere. Uh, Tucker Craft, I loved him as a tight end coming out, and he got the ball to Tucker Craft. You're a big Luke Musgrave guy. He's got weapons. Um, And I think Aaron Jones looked like Aaron Jones of old. Uh, Not not old, but of old. I mean, he he is old. At the end. He's going to be 29 going into next year. But he looked like the Aaron Jones of old. Right. Towards the end of the season, and especially in the playoffs, which I was like, okay. Now, if Aaron Jones comes back and they fix their left tackle problem, which they've, ever since Bakhtiari got hurt and they've had to carry that fucking cap hit and, you know, his contract and he hasn't actually played for him, they draft one. And this is an exciting offense. I can get behind Jordan Love being a top 10 option, top 8, you know, pushing that elite territory. I'm just not quite there yet because of the Trevor Lawrence thing and Mm -hmm. Dak and Fields, like, just what they bring to the table, but he would be in the mix. You take the rookies out of it, and all of a sudden we're talking same tier. Right. Um, another thing I noticed here on Jordan Love. So in 2021, obviously he only played six games, 12 carries, 27 yards rushing. Uh, 2022, he played in four games. Looks like I think he only had one start. 
Uh, one attempt minus one rushing yards. This year, so I could, going into the year, I could see people like, oh, man, this guy doesn't run. He doesn't do shit in the running game. And this year, he had 50 carries, 247 yards, and four touchdown runs. Um, so that's above C.J. Stroud, what C.J. Stroud did rushing the ball. So Jordan Love isn't a complete zero in the run game either. Like, he's going to get you some points there in the rushing game. So that's another thing to look forward to with him as well. I think he can only um, keep those numbers up or maybe even improve on them a little bit. Yeah, I can get behind that. He had a lot of uh, big-time throws, too. Like, you look right. at those metrics, um, not a huge, not a massive amount of danger plays or turnover-worthy plays. Now, you saw in the playoffs, it's like you you fucking lost that game at the end when you decided you wanted mm. to be Brett favre Like, leave that shit away. <laughs> you don't need to be a hero all the time, man. Just run the football for five fucking yards <laughs> right. Right. and then get to the next down. Don't, don't do that shit. So, yeah. But... The, Young quarterback as far as, I mean, he's still young. I mean, I'm 37 fucking years old. You know, I'm saying that, hey, a guy who's 25 is fucking old. But <laughs> young in terms of especially starting in game experience. I mean, uh, he's younger so. than Tua and Herbert yeah. by a couple okay. months. So. Yeah. It just it feels like he's been around forever, don't it? <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, it's just because he got drafted and sat so long. Um, right. But he's only 25 in two months. Herbert is 25 and 10 months. Two is 25 and 10 months. So, you know, he's he's up there. I mean, he's actually younger than Jalen Hurts, too. Jalen Hurts is 25 and five months. So he's younger than these guys. Yeah. By a bit. I, I think he's still got some room to grow, room for the offense as a whole to get better. So I, I, I'm not opposed to it at all, Eric. I just a personal yeah. preference there for Dak and Justin Fields in reality and then the, the Trevor Lawrence, like, seller's market, you know. Right. Hey, come by a fucking Jesus playing football, even though I'm not a big fan of them. Right. Um, all right, so my tier five is a lot of the same guys Mike already had. I have Deshaun Watson, Jared Goff, Bryce Young, Kirk Cousins, and Matt Stafford. And then your tier five consists of Russell Wilson, Matt Stafford, Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins, Will Levis, and J.J. McCarthy. Um, one of the ones I wanted to talk about in there for me was I – I mean, I definitely like Cousins and Stafford um, quite a bit. I don't want to say quite a bit above you, but uh, like above like a Russell Wilson who you have above those guys. Why do you have like a Russell Wilson above like Stafford and Cousins, even though, I mean, it's only a couple spots. But The, the Stafford one is tough. Um, <clears throat> I have some concerns about Stafford just because of I, I know he still wants to play. Um but I also think that neck injury that he suffered too, like that's a dude that could just fall off a cliff and decide that, you know, I don't want to play no more ever again. Right. right. Like he is one hit away in reality. And we've also seen him just take some like nasty injuries, like fuck up fingers and elbows. And yeah. he had that back thing a couple of years ago. And it's just, it's tough to, with Matt Stafford, like the productions there, you like Puka Nakua, you like Cooper cup, you like what Kyron Williams gave you. Um, even though they lost Tyler Higby, you know, the Sean McVay thing, the defense, they got picks now, finally, you know, they, they've come out of that go all in. So they, they have an opportunity to really build that team up. I want to rank them higher, but like that always just sticks in the back of my mind. Uh, the thing about Russ, no matter how, what the media narrative was and what fucking Sean Payton thinks from a fantasy football perspective, Russ was a fucking value this year. Russ was balling out and, and producing, um, Adam put him on a buy, like a video very, very early in the season. And he lived up to it right up until the point Sean Payton was like, yeah, I know we're still in the playoff hunt, but fuck you. We're going to sit you for Jared Stidham. And like, what the fuck? This ain't Russ's fault. <laughs> You're fucking terrible. <laughs> it's, it's your fault, Sean Payton. So, uh, Russ over Stafford. That's probably the only tiebreaker right there for me. I have him right back to back. I just, I think Russ is definitely signing somewhere, whether it's Vegas, whether it's, you know, one of these other teams that needs a vet. Atlanta is a possibility. He can end up there. I think, uh, I think Russ is, uh, just a little bit just because the injury concern isn't there. And they're basically the same fucking age, right? Okay. Russ just doesn't have a bad neck injury or back is back injury right. history. Okay. I can get behind that. Um, yeah, with uh, yeah, Stafford, I like you said, I really like what he's did with Puka. He's still gonna have Cooper Cup. Um, I mean, he's just been. You got to think too, like of the NFL wide receivers 
um, all time, like greatest seasons. He has fucking three of them. He's throwing to Calvin Johnson, Cooper cup, and now Puka Nakua for like three of the greatest seasons we've ever seen in our lives. And they were all quarterbacked by Stafford. So that like, I've never seen Russell Wilson do anything like that. Um, some of these other guys I haven't, I just, I got to keep him a little bit higher for me. I mean, it's not like we have them like that far off of each other. So, um, yeah, I, I acknowledge his injury history. Um, he's always banging his fingers or, you know, his shoulder, his back, whatever it is. So I get you on that. I just, I just got to have him a little higher for me. Even like I said, it's not much, much higher, um, than that Kirk cousins coming off of the Achilles. Yeah, that sucks. Um, I think he's still going to be just fine when he comes back. Like, it's not like rushing was a big part of his game. So I think as long as cousins can protect himself, he should be all right. Um, you had Will Levis. I have Will Levis in my next tier because I have a lot of the same guys in my next tier. So I might as well just get that going. Uh, tier six for me, I have Baker Mayfield, Aaron Rodgers, Will Levis, Russell Wilson, and Geno Smith. And then your tier six, you have Rodgers, Carr, Daniel Jones, Pickett, Geno Smith. Um, pretty much all the same guys besides for a couple of them. I have those guys in my next tier. Uh, tier seven, I'll just mention them, Daniel Jones and Derek Carr. Um so we both have Levis kind of high. What did you think of Levis, um, his rookie year? I mean, we're pretty much um, spot on with him in our rankings. Pretty much exactly what I thought of him coming in. Ridiculous right. tools. He had some fucking moments, too, where you're like, look at this fucking guy. Look yeah, at the like, Miami game. Look at this fucking mayo drinking son of a bitch. Let's go. Like, yeah. he had some moments where you're like, this is a fucking winner. This is a dude who's, like, going to do whatever he can to, to carry a team. And then he also had moments where it's like, as much shit as I give Brock Purdy, this fucking dude looks worse than Brock Purdy. Like, what the fuck were you thinking? So right. he's kind of all over the map. The the uncertainty, right? V Vrabel just basically getting fucking fired and gone. And, okay, now we're going to go in a different direction. No weapons. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is fine, but I think everybody kind of projects he's gone somewhere else. Like, he's going somewhere. Uh, Derrick Henry's at the end of his run. That offensive line was fucking god-awful and horrible. So it's a, uh, it's a lot of like, can they put shit enough shit around him, and calm him down and put him in a scheme where it's like, you can still do what makes you awesome and make some of these off schedule plays and like be that kind of dude who's gonna fucking run through somebody's chest to get a touchdown, but also put the reins on a little bit and go, you know, maybe don't throw it into triple coverage there, bud. <laughs> like, maybe, right, maybe don't right. do that. So he's down this far. I love the kid. I love the talent. It's just the situation right now is like, okay, I'm not going to like fully buy in because if I buy in at like top 20, top 18 QB prices, setting yourself up for disaster. Absolutely. <laughs> this is like the, this is the lessons learned from Mac Jones and Kenny Pickett for me. All right. This, yes. this is where I'm at this year. Will Levis. I'm not doing it again. I still like you. I'm just not going to end up with 17 fucking shares of you across my dynasty leagues because everybody's missing out on Will Levis. You guys are crazy. I'm going to be a little bit more realistic and just put a little right. bit of a floor on it. No, I agree with that. And they gun they're going to have to put the weapons around him. Like what they have right now is not enough. Um, you know, an older DeAndre Hopkins Chig is a nice prospect at tight end, but he's not like some one of these elite tight ends. Like he's just a an athletic guy who's learning the position still, trying to get better at it. Um, I kind of think of him as like a young David Njoku. Like a lot of people liked him, his athleticism and all that. Like it took Njoku like seven years to finally figure it out. Um, this is Njoku's going to, or uh, Chig's going to be third year coming up here. Like it still might take Chig like another contract to figure it out. Um, but I still like the talent. Like I just don't think he's like some top 10 dynasty tight end or anything. Um, Traylon Burks has been a fucking massive disappointment so far. Hopefully he can get his shit together, but it's not looking good. Maybe he has a little mini third year breakout. I'm hoping, but it's not looking very good. So they're going to need more wide receivers like 
Westbrook Akine and Kyle Phillips and Chris Moore are not going to cut it. Like those guys are like fourth or fifth receivers at best. They need really need to upgrade and get like two more really good receivers in this draft. And hey, look at this. The fucking draft's loaded with the receivers. So yes. there's no reason why they can't spend their second and third round picks on pass catchers. I mean, I know their defense, um, their defense was, isn't bad. Like they just suffered a shit ton of injuries at the end there. Um, so their defense isn't bad, but they got to really upgrade that offensive line and really upgrade at wide receiver. Um, they have the first pick that should likely be the first tackle off the board. Um, and the mock drafts that we've been doing, we've been seeing that maybe the giants take a tackle ahead of them. Um, that's really about it that I see so far. <clears throat> if the Titans have to settle for the second offensive tackle in this draft, big fucking deal. Take it. Well, you got that great scenario, right? Where you're talking about like they could be in a position to take the first tackle, or if somebody jumps them and takes a tackle, they could be the one who lines Malik Neighbors at seven. Right. Right. Yeah. If you do, and that, all of a I sudden, then your weapon's fixed, and then in the second, third rounds, like okay, let me try to deep dive a little bit more on offense alignment, see if we can't hit some right. some home runs here. Right. Personally, I would rather have the elite tackle first and then go with the receiver, kind of yeah, the opposite, opposite of what the Bengals did a couple years ago. Um, but guess what? The Bengals, either Jamar Chase or Penny Sewell, didn't matter. They were going to get a fucking stud no matter what. Yeah, either way. You couldn't have so, gone wrong with either one. Right. Way. So um, they chose to go with that route because he had the connection with Burrow. It worked out anyways. They won to a fucking Super Bowl. I'm not going to blame them for doing it. Um, but I think the Titans aren't that close to a Super Bowl at all. Um, so for me, I'm building, get another left tackle. You go with Skaronsky, who they drafted last year at left guard. You have your bookend left side. Hopefully that's fucking protecting Levis for years and years. You still need to get better at center and right guard, right tackle. They can do that free agency or other draft picks, get a couple more receivers there. And I think Levis could, uh, be a guy who still has the chance to ascend these rankings because we mentioned Cousins, we mentioned Stafford, we mentioned Aaron Rodgers, all these guys that are older than him. Levis could easily leapfrog those guys next year with another good season. So Levis has the ability to um, still jump up there, but I'm like you. like I'm not having 17 shares of Will Levis because there's still a lot in the community that still fucking hate the guy for whatever reason. Oh, he sucks. He's not any good. Mm -hmm. You know, They believe whatever fucking fantasy analyst they want to believe uh, reading their propaganda on fucking Twitter. So, you know, I've watched the guy. I know he can play. Yeah, he's not like um, a finished product or anything. He's still learning. But for the tools that I've seen with him play with, he's more than adequate to be a uh, starting quarterback. So I'll get off my well soapbox said. on that one. Well said, well said. Um, and for keep trade cut purposes, you can get him for, uh, you know, early second. Right? Yeah. Maybe mid-second. Yeah, if I can do that all day long. Um, any of those other guys you wanted to talk about before we move on? Uh, I threw J.J. McCarthy up there for the rookie aspect just behind mm -hmm. Will Levis. A tough eval for me. Um, I don't see it. A lot of people do. Um, I do acknowledge he's got a lot of tools. He's mobile. Not like Jaden Daniels mobile, but he's more in the Drake May mold as far mm -hmm. as mobile. Um, he's got good arm talent. He just never was asked to do a lot. I don't know how he's going to respond when the NFL asks him to do a lot. I don't know if this is going to be a... A draft and sit you know we kind of talked about it on the mock draft show is it a possibility the vikings take like a jj mccarthy and then bring cousins back for a year or you know mm -hmm. maybe they bring in your, uh, our guy joe flacco you know as a right. rental um so that kind of plays into it just kind of where how i rank them i don't really know where to put them aaron Rodgers is fine he is 40 that offensive line is dog shit um, I'm, I'm convinced even if A-Rod was there this year, he wasn't going to fix all the Jets problems. Maybe they win an extra game possibly, but that fucking O-line was terrible. It was, yeah. there's, there's a reason he got hurt earlier in the season. I know it's a snap to Keeley's in and all on the O-line, but when your fucking 40 year old quarterback got a scramble on play two, because your O-line is like a fucking floodgate, <laughs> like, right. not good, not good. Um, and then the rest of the guys, Carr, Daniel Jones, Pickett and Geno Smith for now for now are just dudes who are in the nfl who got a starting quarterback job right projected for next year yeah F subject to change but when i'm in a startup draft and i'm picking in the fucking 10th or 11th or 12th round and you know like one of those dudes are on there and i maybe faded quarterback at the top i'm like eh, well fuck it. it's best ball league daniel jones welcome to the squad <laughs> right. right 
That ain't a that ain't a draft to trade. That ain't like oh I can extract. Fuck that. That ain't a QB hoard that I'm working on. None of that. Right. I'm just taking the dudes just as fillers because they have jobs. Right, and like you said, this is probably the end of the quarterbacks that we think are pretty much projected to have a job next season tier. So if like this top twenty seven for me. Um, you have the rookies in there, so your numbers are a little different. But this top 27, these are the guys that we feel, okay, we're pretty much locked into starting quarterback jobs. Some of the rookies are going to come in, probably take three or four of those jobs. That leaves maybe one, two jobs open that we're still trying to interpret. Um, and that's what the rest of my guys uh, kind of look at. So tier eight is Sam Howell. Aiden O'Connell, Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett is my tier eight. Your tier eight, um, you have a lot of the same guys, Sam Howell, Ryan Tannehill, Aiden O'Connell, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Jameis. Um, yeah, so these guys were not really – we're on the fence on if they're going to have a job or not. Sam Howell probably gets replaced just because of where Washington's drafting. Aiden O'Connell, I think he has – like a 40 60 chance of being the quarterback 40 being the quarterback next year for the Raiders just because Pierce worked with them Pierce knows how he works um they did win some games with them was it enough probably not but either or they have a guy that I think can at least do decent there if they can't get a quarterback for whatever reason uh Mac Jones we don't know what his future is he could be traded um, he could still be the starting quarterback there if he beats out whatever rookie they get, um, if they want the rookie to sit a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, so Mac Jones still in the air. And then I have Kenny Pickett after that. I just have not seen anything good from Kenny Pickett. I think the Steelers should be looking to do whatever they can to upgrade that quarterback position this offseason, whether it's through the draft, um, sign Russell Wilson, uh, trade for Justin Fields, whatever it is. So that's kind of where I'm at like in this Kenny Pickett tier uh, for me. Uh, any of these guys you want to talk about? I mean, not really. I'm with you on Kenny Pickett. I rank him after Daniel Jones, but just ahead of Geno Smith because in reality, I think just the way they're talking in the offseason so far, like they're going to give Kenny Pickett another shot whether we like it or not. Um, I don't know what the new regime in, in Seattle is going to do with Geno. Um, right. They can get out of it if they want to. They could draft a guy. They're in a position. J.J. McCarthy's kind of been rumored. Michael mm-hmm. Penix, if they want to stay with the Washington kid, you know, in Seattle, that's a that's a fucking deal that they could do. I don't really know. And then after that, that's why I ranked Bo Nix and Michael Penix. And I've been back and forth on who to rank fucking higher, Bo Nix or Michael Penix. I don't okay. like Bo Nix. I love Michael Penix, but. Yeah, you see some mock drafts come out or some big-time analysts say they don't see it with Penix. They don't even project him in the first round, but they do project Bo Nix. So I'm there, and then fucking today, Eric, I'm on Twitter, and I'm looking, and the uh, reports out of the Senior Bowls, it's night and day difference between Penix and Bo Nix. Bo Nix looks like fucking ass, and Penix looks like a god. And it's like, okay. all right, God damn it, stop this shit. So uh, that's where I'm at with them. The rest of the dudes just back up Sam Howell. Yeah. I think he'd be a good backup somewhere, spot starter, bridge guy. I mean, if Washington that's the should just keep him as a backup. Right. Tannehill, kind of the same thing. Aiden O'Connell, I'm with you where I rank him. May seem a little bit disrespectful, but it does feel like maybe they draft a guy or bring in a Russ or a Vet. But if they don't, fuck, I'll move Aiden O'Connell up. Uh, he did a great thing by the last two games of the year. Like what he put on mm-hmm. film and on wax was really good for fantasy purposes and for NFL purposes. So maybe you're right. Pierce does stick with them because he just knows and they'll reevaluate it in in 25 and see where they're going to go. I mean, he comes, Pierce was mentored by Tom Coughlin um, and Marvin Lewis and and all these types of coaches. Um, He's going to be like a a run first type of coach, I think, or that's how his, how he's going to want to build that team. So I think Aiden O'Connell could run that kind of offense where they're more run first, um, but Aiden Connell obviously is um, – he's a really accurate passer. He's not like, um, you know, fucking firing piss missiles everywhere, but he can he can get the job done. He can put, right. you know, uh, do what you need to do and manage the game and all that. So I think he could be somebody that could start there, but am I banking on it? Probably not. Um, and like you said, the, we mentioned that I'm not going to go through the rest of the rankings. It's all um, Back backups. Dudes. I have up to 80 quarterbacks. Yours goes up to like, I don't know, 40 or 50. I'm not a fucking degenerate. Like you know, I <laughs> yeah. get to the certain point, man. When I had to select Desmond Ritter and Spencer <laughs> right. Rattler and Michael Pratt, 
right? Right after I just got done ranking Zach Wilson and Jameis Winston, I was like, all right, I'm fucking good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to ask uh, Mike where he has Trevor Simeon ranked or anything like that. Who? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but if you want to see those rankings, you can um, join South Harmon on Patreon, sign up, get in the Discord, all that good stuff, and then you can get the rankings there. I think it's the $8 tier. Yep, pregame um, poopers. Get- yeah, you get to that tier, and you can get um, access to everybody's rankings. My ranks are on there. Adams, Mike's, uh, Koopa is on there, and Christian as well has put his rankings in. Dynasty Berry, another perk of the eight dollar tier too is uh, DB's analytics. Wrinkled yeah, Brains D- Channel, man, let's go. Yeah, DB um, Berry great. Le- he levels me, or uh, is right up there with me and a fucking degenerate in the rankings of yes. listing 125 receivers or whatever the hell. Hey, man, you guys keep going at it. Yeah, 130. <laughs> you yeah. guys keep going at it. <laughs> uh, we'll be adding even more after this rookie draft when um, all these wide receivers get listed and we're going to have 175 deep at receiver. I can't wait to see where you list uh, fucking Joe Milton. <laughs> um, I did was a little bit interested in Milton, but I think he's just gonna be like a, a backup who could start um, in a pinch and be okay for like a game or two. But like any chance of him ever like being a consistent starter, no thanks. But in a pinch, with his ability to run the ball and his fucking rocket of an arm, I could see him. You know, being a guy who like wins two games in a row for you, but he's never gonna be like solving fucking a bill belichick defense out there you know what i mean he feels like a really young well he's not young for an nfl prospect but a young shittier version of jacoby Brissett right now right yeah i could see that <laughs> where where there's better. a there's a potential down the road maybe you see something you go oh okay yeah, yeah it's gonna take some time for sure uh, he's not like a day one starter. Yeah, uh, I read a tweet today too. Like the the safest place to stand when Joe Milton's throwing the football is directly in front of him because he's fucking all over the field everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, it, that kind of reminds me though of who's our quarterback one, Josh Allen. Uh, do you remember when he was at the Senior Bowl and they had the yeah. uh, the uh, whatever the hell it is, a stand with the net and it has the pockets and, yep. you know, three pockets yep. and he was throwing it. He didn't even fucking hit the fucking stand. He fucking threw it over the goddamn thing. <laughs> Everyone else is throwing it right in the pockets or just missing or whatever. Yeah, and Josh Allen just fucking fires it right over the top of the fucking thing. I got to watch that guy play in person when he was at Wyoming. Uh, okay. Wyoming came and played Iowa. Uh-huh. And uh, this was his senior year. The, the early season projections already had him, you know, because yeah. of the, the stature and everything, the arm talent, you know, first round pick somewhere in the first round. I just remember leaving that game going like, if that's a fucking first round quarterback, holy shit. Like <laughs> this dude's God awful, man. Yeah. I don't remember who the fuck our quarterback was at the time, but I like, I'll take him in the first round versus this fucking guy. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Oh, woof. All right, so that is it for um, our quarterback ranks. Like I said, you can join that uh, $8 tier and get access to that. Uh, Before we get into America's Favorite Game, I did want to uh, mention a few things about the website at South Harmon FF. Um, Make sure you guys log into that website there, and you can get all these different um, tools and everything that we got going on. So the first one I want to mention is the warp tool. So for all your sleeper leagues, MFL leagues, uh, MFL leagues, you can get your warp values for all those leagues. See what, um, you should be rostering. What are the most important positions in your league in each scoring format, etc. You get all that in the charts. Um, they're really easy to read. Um, if you want to also purchase dynasty mind warped, a video series with Adam and Scott Connor, um, they go over everything about the warp tool that you could ever possibly want to know um, in a video series. You can also get the audio version of that, which I'll explain here in a second. Um, so you can get all of that. If you want to just buy the warp tool um, for one month, it's six ninety dollars per month. You can get it for a full year for $69 for the full year. Great value on both of those. Um, I did want to mention also the new feature that Koopa put on there. So for startups that you're doing right now on sleeper, it's not available for MFL yet, but on sleeper, um, it'll give you a best available based off of warp for your sleeper leagues. Only if you're drafting right now, which is a tremendous new feature to the tool um, that Koopa created. So you can go through your sleeper drafts. You're in round eight, nine, man, who's the best warp available player left based on my scoring settings. 
bam, the warp tool will teach you that, uh, show you who to pick, and it's a great little value. Um, if you want that mind warp version uh, audio, $25. Uh, if you want the video only version, that's $69. Or if you want to get the warp tool for a full year plus the whole video series, $125 on the website. Go ahead and sign up for that. It'll help you a lot this off season uh, for all your startups, all your current leagues that you have going on, whatever it is, um, it'll help you out. The Lab, formerly known as Sleepier, a uh, tool that we have. Uh, basically, it's a league manager tool. You see all your shares um, currently in Sleeper Leagues of each player you own, uh, where you rank in certain leagues. You can compare yourself to your competition in your leagues. Look at what uh, your other uh, league mates have, where you have the advantage. Like, do you have the advantage in draft picks? Do you have the advantage at quarterback um, that ranks all your positions there? Based off of that, you can kind of see... Uh, hey, this guy sucks with um, his team. He's ranked 12th in the league. I want to go after this guy's maybe 101 draft pick. Um, so you can kind of do that kind of in comparison um, with that tool as well. Uh, the Patreons, which we mentioned a little bit ago, uh, you can get access to the whole South Harmon community on Discord. You interact with everyone in the trade channels, post your trades, um, trade advice. Um, you can get access to the trade show. You can post your trades that you do make in your leagues to the, um, and get them onto the trade show. Uh, every Monday, we're doing the mock drafts live on YouTube. Um, I think that's a certain tier. Uh, Mike, you can help me out with that one. $5. Um, $5 tier uh, for the mock drafts that we do every Monday. Uh, you can sign up to be a part of our mock drafts that we do every Monday live on the YouTube um, at South Harmon FF on YouTube as well. Sign up there. You can be the Washington Commanders. You can be the Chicago Bears, Philadelphia Eagles, whatever team is yours yeah, you follow. You can go on there, help us um, do our mock drafts every single week. You get access to the shit rankings in the $8 tier. Uh, there's prospect and Devi talk, especially with Senior Bowl going on right now. Um, that prospect and Devi talk channels have been going crazy, uh, posting all the stuff that we're hearing from the Senior Bowl, so you can get all your information there. Um, we have this tier, uh, one dollar tier, which is the cheapest, all the way up to the Savage tier, which is twenty five dollars as well. Um, you can, guys can sign up for any of those tiers. We'd be happy to have you guys join us. And last but not least, the newest feature that we did add team reviews so if you want to have a team review done for your team this off season you can now do that um you can choose between adam mike myself and koopa we'll give you guys like a 30 to 40 minute review on video if you'd like to join us you can as well um, we'll help you out with team specific needs recommended trades uh what you should be building your team towards answer any of your questions you might have on your team, your league settings, um, anything like that. We're more than happy to help us um, help you with that. Like I said, you can join us on the video call too if you want us to um, help you out. If you have specific questions, you can post your specific questions on the uh, forum as well. Um, go on over to southharmonff.com website. Sign up for that today. Prices vary on that. You'll see it as you um, go through the checkouts. Each uh, person has a different pricing tier, so make sure you guys check that out. Um, if you want a team review this off season or during the season, whenever you want it, uh, we'll be more than happy to help you guys with that. So, did I miss anything, Mike? We got everything good there. You nailed it all, man. That was a hell of a promo you just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the fucking Dusty Roads of promos, you, man. You got it, bud. <laughs> the Rock right. would be proud. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so just make sure you guys check that all out. That's at southharmonff.com. All that stuff is there for you guys. So we'd be happy to have any of you guys join us for any of that stuff. Uh, definitely really good tools, man. The Warp Tool, Sleepier Tool, the Lab, all that good stuff, man. All just so helpful in your leagues. It'll help you become a better Dynasty player. Uh, America's favorite game. Are we ready? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, since we're doing quarterbacks, might as well do Mike, who is your favorite quarterback of all time? Ooh, favorite of all time. Spencer Petras. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, it will not. Actually, there is one Iowa quarterback, which I'm very fond of. So if we're going to go college, Brad Banks. Uh, runner up to the Carson Palmer in the Heisman voting, actually. So Brad Banks really resurrected Iowa football. Okay. Had a had a great year. Uh, pretty sure we went to the Orange Bowl that year. Uh, we won our first Big Ten championship in like forever. Uh, that one that one I sticks in. 
I'm a football fan. I don't remember fucking Brad Banks, but that was Carson Palmer, 2001-ish. 2001 or 2002 yeah, I don't, season. Fuck, yeah. I don't even remember back then, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the year Ohio State played Miami in the national championship, so. Yeah. Craig um, Krenzel. I remember, yeah, I remember Tony Banks. <laughs> no, no, Brad Banks, war number seven, uh, absolutely fantastic, dual threat quarterback. Uh, we won the Big Ten championship that year. Surprisingly, too, funny story about that. For people don't know why uh, Minnesota and Iowa have a beef, uh, the Minnesota people sure fucking know because you'll hear it even in a basketball game if they're playing fucking Michigan in February, there'll be we hate Iowa chants. And people uh-huh. are like, what? You're not even fucking playing Iowa. But they hate it. So that game, Iowa's got their chance to uh, to win their first Big Ten championship in, like, fucking forever. Uh, it was the old, uh, what was it, the Super, no, Metrodome. The old oh, yeah, Metrodome, yeah. Uh, the canopy. Iowa fans flood the stadium because the game's at Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty much Kinnick North at this point. Iowa wins the Big Ten Championship. Iowa fans storm Minnesota's field, tear down Minnesota's goalposts, and carry them out of the fucking Metrodome and parade them up and down the streets. So if you ever wonder why Minnesota fucking hates Iowa, there's your moment. <laughs> I might have to go YouTube this video clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as NFL quarterback, I'm going to stick with the Eagles. Randall Cunningham for me. Uh, Randall, playing with him in video games, watching his fucking highlights, being uh, Eagles, you know, just Eagles legend. Mm-hmm. More modern. Uh, uh, big Michael Vick fan. <laughs> yeah. Big Michael Vick. Falcons Michael Vick or Eagles Michael Vick. Either one. Right. Uh, he was uh, just fucking electric. How about Steelers Michael Vick? Not so good. <laughs> That's a, you almost forget he played for the Steelers too, don't you? Right, yep. They were like number two on the Steelers uh, too. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Something crazy. Yeah. I wonder if I could find a Michael Vick Steelers jersey with that number two on it. <laughs> Probably. So I'm sure it exists somewhere. Well, the Steelers Hawkeyes jerseys, they look the same. So it could be like a Michael Vick Iowa jersey too if I really wanted to pawn there it you off. Yeah. I'd find yep. one of them cheap ones on the, you know. Uh, we had somebody comment on the the fucking Aldi's thing on a show a few times ago. Maybe I'll find a Steeler. Oh, <laughs> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> All right, so Cunningham and Vic, two good choices. Uh, mine, I've I've talked about before. Donovan McNabb's always been my favorite player, hero, all that stuff. Like just watching him at Syracuse and then going on to the Eagles. That dude was absolutely phenomenal. It's a shame that he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. Hopefully, he gets in there. Um, he definitely should be in there. Uh, modern day, I fucking love Aaron Rodgers, and that's more been like I've expected him. Like you know, most people hated Tom Brady and all that, uh, just because he won so much. But like as you get older, you respect the hell out of what he's done. Aaron Rodgers, kind of the same way. I never really hated Aaron Rodgers. I've always like uh, admired him from afar. But more recently, lately, just being on McAfee's show and. When he first came back um, to Green Bay that for that last year, and he did that open press conference where he just fucking laid out everything of what happened and why and where why things are where they're at right now, like he is so open, just does not give a fuck, um, just will say whatever he wants to say, whatever the truth is. Like I just love that about Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers definitely one of the ones that I really admire. Always really enjoyed Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning's always been a, a favorite of mine too. Um, nowadays, I really like Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's always I've I've been a fan of his as well as the way he plays the game. So um, yeah, just a few of the guys that I like right now. Some good choices. Some good choices. Yeah, Aiden right O'Connell now. can't forget Aiden O'Connell. I really love watching Justin Fields play right now. Uh, Fields. Lamar obviously just absolutely yeah. electric. Jordan Love, we talked about him. Yeah. Big fan of his game, man. That Chiefs wow. game was an eye opener for me. And ever wow. since, it was like, whew, lots was of uh, lots piss of piss missiles. <laughs> yeah, a lot of piss missiles. <laughs> you know, I love a good piss missile. Oh yeah, he could uh, he could throw it, man. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, and then my other favorite quarterback, Brock Purdy. One uh, another one that I enjoyed <laughs> watching play, but he was god fucking awful. Was Tim Tebow. But it was, like, so fascinating to watch him fucking play because every fourth quarter, this guy would pull it out of his ass, and they would win somehow, some way. Tim Tebow would pull it out. 
Yeah, looked horrible doing it too. Yeah, he. I. I, I even bought a Tim Tebow Broncos jersey. What? You know? Yeah, I had that somewhere. Did you find um, it at all these? No. Oh, um, I did like the Broncos there for a little bit because that's where Dawkins went. I was a big Brian mm-hmm. Dawkins fan, so I had a orange Brian Dawkins Broncos jersey too. Um, but I liked Tim Tebow. Um, I. Like he was like one of those guys you hated at Florida. He beat Ohio State the one year in the national championship. Um, but it's like, how can you hate Tim Tebow? Like, it wasn't like he's an asshole or anything. Like, all he's doing is praying. Uh, he does the right things. He's not an asshole. Um, you know, he just does everything right. Like, he's just one of those. I don't want to say he's a perfect human being, but he was damn near pretty close to it. You know, um, yeah. of all the stuff that he does and. Um, whatever it is, but just watching him play, man, like just so many games, they were like one score games or whatever. And you're like, this guy can't throw his way out of a fucking paper bag. And he just pulled it out somehow rushing the ball, uh, just would get a timely throw here and there. Um, just, it was amazing what Tim Tebow could do sometimes. It happens though. Some of those athletes, right. They develop that, you know, they're winners and uh, people just fucking hate them. They just yeah. absolutely despise them. So yeah. uh, I get it. I get it. You know, people accuse me of that with Brock Purdy now. I get it. Fair right. criticism if you want. Uh, but, you know, as a grown up too, like I really enjoyed watching Duke basketball, man. People fucking hated J.J. Redick. I was like, why do you hate yeah. this guy? Dude, fucking six four white dude just chucking threes from all over the place. Yep. Like, uh, that's what Tyler, I want, man. Uh, Tyler Hansborough, same thing when he was with North Carolina. Well, I hated Tyler Hansborough just because he fucking played in North Carolina. Fuck right. UNC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, see, you passion. hated UNC, but it was the yeah. same, you know, same kind of thing. Like, yeah. like, not like he did anything wrong or anything like that. Just people hate him for whatever reason. Um, Joakim Noah, people hated him in college yeah, basketball. I, I fucking hated that guy. I uh, still do. People hated Colt McCoy when he was at Texas. Yeah. Yeah, that's another right. one. Yeah. So, right. yeah, there's uh, a few of those guys for sure. Matt Liner. <laughs> yeah, Matt Liner. Everyone hated him. Um, yeah, I get it. I get it, definitely. Everybody loved Reggie Bush. Fucking hated Matt Liner. <laughs> yeah. I loved watching Vince Young play in college. Money. Fuck, Still, man. hands down, best national championship game ever. Oh, yeah, ever. easy. I could watch that, go back and watch that game every day of the week. Best uh, best performance in a in a championship game ever, Hands and down. that that Texas team never gets credit as being one of the all time greats. But they yeah. fucking they took it to a USC team that was right up there with the all time greats. So oh, yeah. I would still put uh, like the two thousand one two thousand two Miami Hurricanes as the best college football team of all time, just because they got like fifty three NFL players on that right. fucking roster, and like nineteen of them are first round draft picks, <laughs> right. other than their quarterback. You know, being Ken fucking Dorsey. Yeah. Didn't he play for the Browns at one point too? Wasn't Ken uh, Dorsey? Dorsey. Or was it Bills? Um. He did play in the NFL for a little bit. I, I don't. Thought he he might have played for the Browns. I gotta look I this remember. up before we get out of here now. Yeah, I forget where the hell he ended up, but um, yeah, he played he played in a couple different spots. All right, Ken Dorsey. San Francisco and Cleveland. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Started out in San Francisco, then went to Cleveland for two years. 06 and 2008. Yeah, that's probably with Butch Davis' connection, probably. Uh, yeah, he had one attempt for Cleveland in 2006, so you wouldn't know him. But uh, 91 attempts, played in uh, four games in 2008. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I remember he was with a couple teams. I just didn't remember Cleveland. But now he's back with Cleveland, so are you muted? He's Romeo. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, he's a Romeo. Okay. Romeo Grinnell, yep. Interesting. Ken Dorsey. <laughs> That's a good one, though. Favorite favorite quarterback, so Brad Banks for college, just because of the Iowa thing. It's the only good one I can remember in my time. Wow, we had some in the 80s. I wasn't fucking born yet. Yeah. No one ever mentions McNabb. I'm, like, the only, like, McNabb, like, truther. I'm an Eagles fan. I love McNabb, right? Like, I watched him my entire career. I was an Eagles fan before McNabb, and then, like, he brought us to the promised land. The thing for me, though, being a diehard Eagles fan is... We got on the cusp of the fucking Super Bowl. Terrell Owens busted his fucking ass to get back from that broken goddamn leg. 
yeah. that he suffered due to the Dallas Cowboys being assholes, yeah. made it to the Super Bowl, is tearing it up in the Super Bowl, and Donovan McNabb there is vomiting on the last fucking drive because he's hung over from the night before. For the one of the what I thought at the time was going to be the only chance as an Eagles fan I was going to see a Super Bowl fucking win. Like right. game winning drive and you're throwing up, fuck you. And then he ruined yeah. it forever. <laughs> like, right. I, I mean, but a lot of people forget that we were, we should have fucking beat the Cardinals like whatever it was five years later. Uh, yep. It was like Andy Reid's last time, McNabb's last time. We should have won that and played the Steelers in the Super Bowl that year. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, what, five NFC championship games out of 10 years? Like, yeah, you can't fucking argue that. Um, this is, this is for me, anyways. It's kind of like when Stafford returned to Detroit this year, right? Is it right to boo the man for all he gave you? No. Am I still a diehard fan and I'm gonna boo the fuck out of you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Especially when he, it was an ultimate slap in the face, like when he got traded to fucking Washington. Like you go from yeah. one division rival to the next. They're like, yeah, we don't think anything of you. We don't think you can beat us. We're gonna trade you to Washington. Like that was a slap in the face. Yep. So But it was it was hilarious though when Michael Vick came in and had that Monday night game versus mm-hmm. Donovan McNabb. Right. Yeah. And we're like, Yeah, what up? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> We're good now. Mike Vick's here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. First play bomb to Deshaun Jackson. What's up? <laughs> yep, yep. All right. Well, that is it for this week, guys, for quarterback ranks. We'll be back next week for the quarterback warp show. Um, thanks, you guys, for joining in. Make sure you guys check out that website, quarterback or uh, South Harmon FF. Make sure you guys sign up over there and check out all the stuff we got going on there. Mike, you got anything before we get out of here? No, good one. Good one. Yeah, a lot of good discussion here. So absolutely. in-depth quarterback month is kicking off the right way. Absolutely. All right, guys, we will see you next week. Take care. Peace. Peace.